Hey guys, what's up? Nick here once again, and today we're going to set out to rank every Twisted Metal special weapon from worst to best. So let's get right into it. First things first, I want to give a couple disclaimers at the beginning of this video. First of all, this is going to be by far my longest video I've ever put on this channel, so make sure to grab a snack and a drink and enjoy the show. Next, my ranking criteria is going to include the creativeness or just how creative the special weapon is, its usefulness slash how much damage it does to the opponent, its ease of use, is it straight up just you hit a button and it does everything for you, or is there some type of combo enabled in order to use the special weapon, the fun factor, basically just how fun is it to use, is it a wow, like if somebody was to play it for the first time or use the special for the first time, would it make them say wow out loud, how powerful the special weapon is in relation to the game that it's in, what I mean by that is in certain games, the health pools for vehicles are a lot larger than other games. So we're going to be looking at these objectively based on which game they're coming from. If a special does show up in multiple games, I am going to consider it as one space on this list unless I do state it otherwise. Twisted Metal 2012 cars have two specials per vehicle, but since so many of them are similar, I also have combined some of them on this list. Unplayable boss characters have been disqualified from this list, such as Warhawk, and Dark Tooth from Twist Metal 2. Now, normally I know Dark Tooth is available to play as with a Game Shark code. However, I was not able to get it working properly, and that's why they are disqualified from this list. Also, this list is based on only the playable versions of said characters. This is not based on the ones you go against. A quick example is Trapper in Twist Metal Small Brawl's special is much better than the version you actually play as once you unlock him. And lastly, all specials from Twist Metal Head-On will be ranked based on their attributes before the upgrades. Mainly because I don't personally believe in the upgrade system. I thought it was stupid from the get-go, and I just feel that's the most fair. Even though I do understand some of the specials change up completely after you get the full upgrade, I'm still going to only base this off what the car feels like when you first pick it up and play it for the first time. Also, you're going to notice with the gameplay within this video, I was using Game Shark codes, and the main reason for that was just so I didn't have to wait for the recharge cycle of the special weapons, and thus I could give you guys an accurate look at how they work for the gameplay. Alright, with all that being said, let's get into the worst of the worst. Starting at number 100 is going to be ATV's Shotgun Blast from Twisted Metal Head On. As you guys know, ATV is regarded as one of the worst characters ever put into a Twisted Metal game, and funny enough, their special weapon is also, in my opinion, the worst special in the entire series of games. Not only are you driving a little guy on an ATV that has barely any armor to begin with, but he's also given the weakest special in the entire game. It's a literal shotgun blast, it's two blasts of shotgun pellets that do little to no damage, and you have to be within a two-foot distance of your enemy. This special is just straight up ass. Next at 99, we're looking at Darkseid's Death Blast from Twisted Metal 1. Darkseid, especially in Twisted Metal 1, has always had a special place in my heart. I think they always will. I love their iconic design. I love Mr. Ash. And of course, I love the lost ending. That being said, though, you cannot stay away from the fact that the special weapon for Darkseid is legitimately useless. It's called a Death Blast, but it's basically just a white pixel that shoots out straight in front of you. It does not home in on the enemy, and it does little to no damage. It doesn't even lift the enemy up in the air or do anything useful for that matter. Essentially, Dark Side Special, in my opinion, really is just his ram damage in Twist Metal 1, so you're better off just not using it at all. At number 98, we're looking at Tower Tooth's Flamethrower and Lightning Storm in Twist Metal Head On. The reason Tower Tooth is so low on this list, honestly, is just because you can only play them on one level in the entire game. They really should not have been a playable character to begin with. I get it, they tried to throw something extra in there to be an incentive to beat it on hard, and it is kind of interesting the first time you get to play it, but you soon realize that their special weapon is literally nothing special. It's just a literal flamethrower that has a 5 foot radius, it's very short. And it does ass damage. It, it pretty much does no damage whatsoever. I literally sat here for like seven minutes recording this session of me trying to kill everybody in the level with just using the flamethrower special. And it took way longer than I would like to admit. So yeah, pretty terrible all around. So that's why they are at 98. Coming in at 97, we're going to be looking at Reaper with their RPG in Twisted Metal 2012. 
The RPG is the second evolution of the special weapon for Reaper, and my god is it ever so useless. It's kind of a neat idea and concept, but in a game that's as fast-paced and frantic as TM2012, it absolutely makes no sense that you'd want to use a character that has pretty much the weakest amount of armor in the entire game, and having them have to stop in place and slowly look around and aim to shoot an RPG that doesn't really do all that much damage. So yeah, in reality, this is just a straight up useless special that no one ever uses anyway because the other main special is so much better. So that's why I feel this is a good place at 97. And at 96, we're looking at Hammerhead's Stomp from TM3. Hammerhead has been notorious in the Twist Metal franchise for being the monster truck that can crush its enemies, and I've always had a soft spot for them even though they really have never been that great, and Twist Metal 3 is definitely no exception. Mixed with the questionable physics of TM3 and being able to flip over very easily, the fact that their special weapon involves you ramming into the vehicle is just a really head-scratching moment. It would have made so much more sense to have Hammerhead just come back with their iconic crushing move. However, they decided, you know what, we're just going to make Hammerhead run into people. In doing so, I will say that their special does do a decent amount of damage in terms of Twisted Metal 3 specials, but it does leave you open to getting damaged over time because you're going to be either landing on your head or flying off of a building after you've run into somebody, thus again putting yourself in peril. So, in essence, their special does more harm to yourself than it does to the enemy. So that's why it's at 96. Coming in at number 95 is 12 pack with the reticle attack from Twisted Metal Lost. Now the reason this is so low on the list is because 12 pack to me is a really unique and cool character. I like the concept of them. I love their vehicle. Even if I think the beheaded thing is kind of cheesy and stupid for a Twisted Metal Black type video game. But that being said, the actual special weapon is just... Uh, it, you can tell it was a last minute addition just thrown in there just for whatever because it's literally the reticle pickup that you got in Twisted Metal Black. They just removed it in the Lost game and gave it as a special weapon to 12-pack. Now don't get me wrong, if the reticle was introduced as a special in Twisted Metal Black and it wasn't actually just a pickup, I probably still would be hating on it because it, it just takes way too long to use and it doesn't necessarily do all that much damage. Yes, if you are able to lock on an enemy for the full nine seconds that you have to wait for it to count down, and you shoot at the last second, you will get, I think, 45 to 50 points of damage, which is relatively pretty high in terms of special weapon damage in Lost. But the amount of times you are able to actually do that is very slim. It, it barely ever happens. So in essence, he just becomes very frustrating and it literally feels like a useless special. So that's why 12 pack is at number 95. And moving on to number 94 is gonna be Firestarter and their torch in Twisted Metal 3. Firestarter essentially was the new Thumper in Twisted Metal. Even though they still have Thumper in the game, I don't understand why they thought Firestarter was a needed character, because essentially they're just a guy driving a hot rod with a flamethrower special. And if you guys are new to the channel, you might not know that I'm just not a fan of flamethrower specials. I think they're just generic and not really that exciting, even though they are pretty strong most of the time. However, this one couldn't even get that right. The main problem with the Torch Special Weapon is that it doesn't necessarily shoot out straight in front of the car. Any type of movement makes it kind of wiggle back and forth and thus not put all of its energy into the enemy in front of you. You really can only use the special in the best way by freezing the enemy, running up to them, and then just sitting in place and not moving at all and shooting them with your special. You can do a decent amount of damage this way, but most of the time, the enemy is probably going to get out of the freeze or you're not going to be able to freeze them in time and then they're going to touch you as you're trying to burn them, thus setting yourself on fire. So in a way, the torch ends up just becoming a self-inflicting special, which is just very frustrating to the player. So the fact that it gives little to no damage unless you freeze the enemy and you are able to sit in place for the entire time, of course, you're also putting yourself in peril at that point to get attacked by other players, it just becomes more of a nuisance than an actual special weapon, and that's why Firestarter's Torch is at 94. Number 93 is going to be Captain Grimm's Cannon in Twisted Metal 4. Now by the name, Captain Grimm, you can probably tell as he was meant to be a Mr. Grimm from the previous games, who has become an iconic character in the Twisted Metal series for driving a motorcycle. For some reason in TM4, they decided to ditch the motorcycle concept and just put him in a regular looking vehicle. Not only that, but they ruined his signature glass cannon special weapon. 
He's always been known to have a very strong skill shot type special weapon. And this time around, it's still a skill shot, but it just doesn't do any damage. It does, but very, very little. It does set the opponent on fire, but fire damage into Swindle 4 is very limited. And most of the time they'll use turbo to get out of it. So it ends up being useless. So not only is his cannon special very difficult to hit enemies with, it also gives you a little bit of knockback, which is really annoying because pretty much no other special weapon in the game does this. And so it really catches you off guard. There'll be situations where you might be trying to get away from somebody. You do a 180 and shoot them with your special. It'll throw you backwards and you could fall off a cliff and literally die. So that's why Captain Grimm's cannon is at 93. At 92, we're looking at flower power, the power of flower from Twisted Metal 3. This special weapon, I really want to love it. I really do because I like the concept of it. I think it does have a nice creativity to it. I like the colors of it and the way it moves in the air is very unique. However, that's where the goodness stops. It does barely any damage once it actually makes contact with the character. And that's if you're lucky enough for it to actually hit somebody. I tell you, nine times out of 10, this thing will fly around and randomly hit the ground right around the enemy, but it never actually hits them. It's very frustrating. And not only that, but it takes a while to come back and recharge, so it just becomes borderline useless. I'd rather just use a homing missile on somebody rather than her special. So that's why Flower Power's Power of Flower is at 92. At 91, we have Create a Car's Twin Torches in Twisted Metal 4. I did want to put this one a little bit higher up on the list. However, it's this low just because of how lame this one is. It's got a cool concept that it's two fireballs that essentially home in on the enemy, and granted, it does have pretty good tracking, but in my experience, it does still end up missing 7 out of 10 times. It's really weird. And even when you do hit the opponent, it does so little damage that it's, again, basically useless. I want to give credit where credit is due. Create a car was a cool concept. I really hope they bring it back in a future game. But sadly, having a created car is not going to fix this terrible special. And that's why it's at 91. Coming in at 90 is going to be Crimson Fury's Crimson Blade in Twisted Metal 1. Now the Crimson Blade special essentially is the same thing as Darkseid's Death Blast. However, it's higher up on this list mainly because it actually does something a little bit useful. It does actually do a little bit more damage than Darkseid's, which is good, but it also juggles characters if you have them saved up. Because thankfully, the Crimson Blade does recharge a little quicker than the Death Blast from Darkseid's, so you can stack them pretty heavily. And once you're in a fight, you can just kind of unload them on the person in front of you if you have good enough aim and essentially juggle them up in the air and also do combos. It does help if you are pretty well in tone with the Twisted Metal physics. But if you're a new player, you're going to look at this guy and just say, wow, this special does really suck because in reality, it barely does any damage to begin with. It is a skill shot. It just goes straight in front of you and it's very small, just like the Death Blast from Darkseid. So it's got a really small hitbox and it's hard to actually hit the opponent. And that's why Crimson Fury's Crimson Blade is at 90. Now at 89, we got Hammerhead's Crusher from Twisted Metal 1, 2, Small Brawl, and Head On. Now I understand that Small Brawl's version is a little bit different and even Head On's is pretty unique compared to TM1 and 2's versions of the Crusher. But in reality, they're all the same concept. You drive a monster truck. And once you use a special weapon, you essentially crush the character in front of you by running them over and doing damage. It's a cool concept. I got to admit, I like Hammerhead. I always have. I love the characters. I love the designs. And I like how the special works. However, the actual damage and spectacle of Crusher special has always been a lot to be desired. TM1 and 2s are definitely the worst of these four, in my opinion. I think Small Brawls is the best with having these spike wheels come out and you're able to actually get on top of the vehicle and crush them for a few seconds. And it also gives you a little bit of a speed boost to catch up to the character to do the special, which I think is really unique and cool, but it just doesn't do that much damage. So it ends up kind of not feeling as fulfilling as it should. Now, I do know there's skilled players out there who are able to drop mines at the same time you're riding on top of the vehicle, but I'm looking at this objectively as just what is the special right out the gate. And looking at TM head-on's version, they kind of went the grasshopper route where essentially Hammerhead can jump in the air and land on top of vehicles and do a crushing maneuver with some type of weird cyclone fan in the back of his car. I got to admit, it's it's unique. It's it's creative, but it still doesn't do a whole lot of damage. So in the end, I like the creativity from Hammerhead's Crusher, but the fact that it does so little damage in pretty much every one of these games ends up being at 89 on this list. 
Coming in at 88, we got Augur's Drill from TM3 and 4. Augur was a brand new character introduced in TM3, essentially to take the place of Mr. Slam. However, I don't know why they did this. Augur is straight up just the ass version of Mr. Slam. It's kind of a unique concept, I gotta admit, with a giant drill in the front of your vehicle. However, it's much more difficult to get somebody to run directly into that drill to get them onto the special versus a giant bucket in the front of your car that you can grab opponents with. Not only that, but his drill doesn't last very long. It's literally just a couple seconds, and then once you're done drilling them, it essentially shoots the opponent off from you, which with the physics of TM3, thankfully they did fix this in TM4, but sadly with 3, you basically get sent flying every single time, especially if you're drilling a larger vehicle. And sadly, it still doesn't do that much damage either. So the only way to really use his drill effectively is to freeze an opponent, drill them, and then while you're drilling, you can use other weapons at the same time to pull off a nice combo. That's why they are a little higher on the list, as you can see, but definitely still nowhere near the top contenders, and that's why I think 88 is a fine place for Augur's Drill. Next at 87, we got Microblast Gatlinger from Twisted Metal 4. Now, a lot of you might be surprised by this. Whoa, he didn't put this at the worst of the worst? And no, the main reason for that is because even though I'm very irritated by a very small vehicle with very little armor getting pretty much the worst special in the entire game, and the fact that it's literally a speed missile, which every other character in the game can pick up, but I gotta give them a little bit of props here because of the fact that you can gain up to 100 specials if you let it wait long enough to charge them up, and you can use them all at once by holding down the fire button to do a pretty decent amount of damage if you're able to freeze an opponent. So if you are smart enough and you don't mind being a little patient to charge up the special weapons, the Gatlinger can be a useful tool in battle, but for the most part, it's pretty terrible. <laughs> so that's why I'm leaving it at 87. Next up at 86, we have Roadboat with the Magnetic Projectiles from TM2012. This is the very first version of the special weapon to Roadboat, and this is probably the worst special in the game in my opinion. Yes, you can ricochet his special off of walls. I think people have told me it does extra damage this way. However, it's very inaccurate and very difficult to do with how large these maps are. There is barely any situations where I'm able to get close enough to somebody to ricochet a shot off a wall to hit them with the magnetic projectile to do more damage. So by itself, if you're just shooting it straight at somebody, and it does home in a little bit, thankfully, and you get a direct hit, it only does a very minimal amount of damage, essentially being useless. So that's why Roadboat's magnetic projectiles for me are at 86. Moving on to 85 is gonna be the Jones's Hornets from Twisted Metal 4. The Jones's Hornets are literally just a rehash of Warthog's original three missile special weapon. They even have the same Patriots look to them with the red, white, and blue. I have to admit though, I do like the look of them in this game. I like that they are a little slower, even though in my opinion, it does hurt the gameplay. I wish they were faster in general, but I like the look of them being slower and their sound effects sound cool and they do home in pretty easily on the opponent, making the special easy to use and pick up for new players. But the fact that it barely does any damage, even if you do end up hitting all three of the Hornets, really makes it feel quite useless. It's not the worst special in the game, but it's pretty close. That's why the Joneses are going to be at 85. Moving on to 84, we have General Warthog with the Ion Pad in Twisted Metal 4. Kind of coming back to the Joneses previously, I talked about how their special weapon was just a rehash of the original Warthogs, which is hilarious to me because we have Warthog in Twisted Metal 4, but they decided to give him something completely different. I have to applaud them a little bit for creativity here because no other special weapon in the game is essentially like this. However, the special does suck. It's just a pad that he lays behind him and then you detonate it at will. Thankfully, there's no distance to this. You can lay it down and go across the map and blow it up when you want, but the blast radius is very, very small. So the character that you're trying to hit literally has to be on top of the pad to essentially take any damage. If you are lucky enough to get an opponent to drive right over the pad and to detonate it on time, it can do a decent amount of damage in terms of Twisted Metal 4 specials. However, the fact that it's so difficult to actually get an enemy to drive over the pad, it makes it relatively useless. So that's why Warthog's Ion Pad is going to be at 84. Coming out to 83, we have Darkseid's Freeze Flamethrower from Twisted Metal 3. 
Darkseid is a character that was originally planned to be in Twisted Metal 3 for the final build, but I guess they just didn't have enough time, so they put him behind, I guess, some type of lock screen that is only accessible through a Game Shark code. However, I was able to get him to unlock pretty easily, so that's why he's on this list. And his special weapon is literally the same thing from Firestarter, their torch, just with an added freeze installed. Now, the freeze does help a lot because you don't have to waste your own energy to do a freeze attack before using Firestarter's torch. However, it does the same amount of damage as Firestarter's, and it's the same type of technology in terms of it's not a straight shot. It does wiggle around if you move, which is really annoying. And again, if anybody touches you after you let them on fire, you too get lit on fire and take damage. So the only way to benefit from Darkseid's special is to freeze somebody with the freeze installed with the special weapon, use the flamethrower, and then continuously freeze them as you're using the flamethrower. It does do a sizable amount of damage if you do it successfully, and he does have a lot of armor to keep you in place a lot longer than you do with Firestarter, and that's why he's a little bit lower on this list compared to Firestarter. Moving on to 82, we have Quattro's Microwave in Twisted Metal 4. It's kind of funny to me that Axel is in TM4, but yet they still gave his iconic Shockwave special to somebody else in the same game. And not only that, but it's a weaker version of it. So it's still the same Shockwave that we're used to, but instead of coming out on the ground around the vehicle, it actually completely envelops the vehicle and can hit anybody from any direction, which is kind of nice. If you're dropping down an enemy, you can shoot them below you with your special, or if they're about to drop on top of you, you can send them flying which in some instances with the TM4 physics can be quite comical, but in terms of damage output, it's very, very weak. And the fact that he's a weak armored vehicle on top of that, it kind of makes you feel like you're at a pretty big disadvantage using his special that involves you having to be within a foot of another vehicle. But again, gonna give him a couple extra points just because I like the fact that it does damage vehicles above and below you as well as on the sides like Axel's does. But again, you can't stray away from the fact that it does barely to little any damage and that's why Quattro's Microwave is at 82. Moving on to 81, we have Twister's Tornado Spin from Twisted Metal 2. I know I'm probably gonna get some hate in the comments for this one because I know there's a lot of diehard Twister fans out there and don't get me wrong, I wanted to put this higher up on the list because I love the iconic design of Twister's Tornado. But I cannot stay away from the fact that Twister's Tornado Spin in Twistmill 2 ends up most of the time doing more damage to her than it does to the opponent. Now, if you have played the game enough to learn the special moves of using a shield or dropping mines or anything of the sort, you can do a massive amount of damage with her special in this game. But again, I am looking at this as a first time player picking it up and looking at the special weapon and trying to use it on every character. And more times than not, if you're using the special against a character that is larger than Twister, which is pretty much every car in this game, they will end up crushing you even if you use her shield. It's really weird. Axel, for instance, will completely kill you in two hits if they end up bumping into you while in your tornado, even if you're using the shield. And that's why I am lowering Twister's tornado spin to 81. Number 80 is going to be Cousin Eddie's massive ram and TM head-on. As I said at the beginning, we're not looking at the second evolution of his special weapon after the upgrades, which would have been the flamethrower, which is also pretty ass. But we're looking at his first special weapon, which is just literally a ram. It's essentially the same thing as Dark Side Special in Twist Metal Black, where you honk your horn, get a little bit of a speed boost, and you ram people head on. It does do a relatively decent amount of damage, I will admit, for Twisted Metal head on. And that's why it's a little bit higher on this list than I would have probably put it if I was just thinking of it at the top of my head. However, going back and getting footage for this video, I was kind of surprised at the amount of damage it does. However, I'm still placing it at 80, mainly because it's not very creative. It's literally just a ram attack with a horn going off. And this is a game that came out after Twist Metal Black that already implemented the special for Darkseid. And not only that, Cousin Eddie is a boss character, so you would assume he would have some type of boss-related special weapon. And I'm sorry, this special does not do enough damage to actually tell me this is a boss character. So yeah, Cousin Eddie's massive ram is at 80. Now coming into the 70s, we're at 79 with Warthog's Crusher and Crowd Control from Twisted Metal 2012. I understand the Crusher and the Crowd Control are two separate special weapons, but I'm putting them both at 79 because they're equally about the same in my opinion. The Crusher attack is essentially the exact same thing as Axel's special weapon in this game and also from Twisted Metal Black. 
where you can essentially run over the character and jump off of them doing damage and then you can keep coming back to them and doing more damage as a combo if you do it fast enough. It can be quite deadly for most people if you're good enough at the game, but compared to other special weapons in the game that are much easier to use and pull off without the detriment of showing their G-spot, which if you get hit, you can pretty much die in one hit, it kind of makes this special feel very ineffective, which ends up being useless, in my opinion. The crowd control version of it is relatively cool, but it only shoots a shockwave out in front of you. So if anybody's to the left, the right, or behind you, it will miss them completely and do no damage whatsoever. So, I don't know. These special weapons in general are kind of lame, and that's why they're definitely at the lower side of the list for Twist Metal 2012 specials. They're not the worst in the game by far, but I also have a sour taste in my mouth with Warthog after how difficult it is to unlock him in the first place, so the fact that he isn't overpowered is kind of bullshit, and that's why for me, Warthog's Crusher and Crowd Control specials are at 79. Coming in at 78, we have Kamikaze's Freeze Bomb in Twisted Metal 2012. This is the second special weapon for Kamikaze in 2012. Basically, it's a bomb that you charge up and you throw at the ground and it creates a shockwave around you. And then if anybody is within that vicinity, they get frozen for a certain amount of time. It is very useful in Twisted Metal races, which you cannot skip throughout the single player tournament, which is a bummer. And it does help in certain situations for crowd control. If you're stuck in between a ton of enemies, you don't know what to do, and you don't have enough ability or energy, I should say, to use a freeze, you can use the freeze bomb and get everybody to be frozen for a few seconds to get out of trouble pretty quickly. Now this doesn't do any damage to the enemy however, so it's one of those things like do you risk wasting a special just to get away from somebody? And if I'm also being honest, I've never been in a situation, at least except for the racing in Twisted Metal 2012, where I've had to use this in a situation over the main special to get away from something. Because Kamikaze is already a really fast vehicle, they can get out of tight situations without having to freeze people. So, which kind of leads me to the freeze bomb is kind of useless, except for those one's very specific situations. And even though I think it is a unique concept, I do like the thought of it. I think it's a cool thing. It's just not useful enough for me to put it higher on this list. So that's why Kamikaze's freeze bomb is at 78. And now coming in at 77, we have Drag Queen's Flamethrower in Twisted Metal 4. The flamethrower concept, as I stated before, to me just isn't that exciting. It's not very creative. I gotta admit though, I like the design of the vehicle and it fits the flamethrower aesthetic, but we're not talking about the vehicles here. This is strictly just the special weapon. They thankfully did fix the flame physics in Twisted Metal 4 compared to TM3, where now if you move, the flame stays in a straight line like it did back in Twisted Metal 2. So if you do freeze somebody, you can do a relatively decent amount of damage with this special weapon. However, it is lower on this list because not only does it not do as much damage as other flame related specials in the same game, but you're also stuck inside the vehicle of Drake Queen, which has the worst handling in the entire game, which just makes a special like this an atrocious pain to try and use. So that's why Drake Queen's flamethrower is at 77. Moving on to 76, we're looking at Crimson Fury's reticle pulse blast from Twisted Metal head on. Crimson Fury, as well as Hammerhead, has a special place in my heart as well because we've only seen them four times in the entire series, so seeing them in a game again is always fun to have them there. And the Radical Pulse Blast is not terrible, it's not useless, it does do some damage, but it's definitely weak compared to most in the entire game. It's essentially just a little red fireball that once locked onto the character in front of you, shoots and does home in a little bit in order to hit them for 18 points of damage. And 18 points of damage isn't terrible but it's again not that great it's more of like on the lower to medium size in terms of damage output for specials in head-on and the fact that it's not very creative it's just a little fireball that shoots at the opponent in front of you as long as you have them locked on it, it just kind of it's just kind of meh it's not amazing it's not terrible it's just meh and that's why i think that's a good spot for it at 76. at 75 we have dark sides dark side slam from twisted metal black lost in 2012. The Dark Side Slam is an iconic special weapon, I have to admit. It makes sense. You got a giant semi truck, so why not use it to ram people off the road? But the main reason it's not any higher on my list is because it just doesn't do as much damage as I really feel it should. I will say the TM2012 version of Dark Side and their Dark Side Slam special is a lot better than the Black and Lost versions, but it's still blindsided by the amount of ram damage that the card does just by itself. It kind of makes the special feel obsolete entirely in 2012. It just adds a blur effect on it before you hit somebody. 
Whereas in Black and Lost, the ram damage in general isn't that great, so you do feel a sense of accomplishment when using the special. It just isn't nearly as strong as I think it should be. And not only that, it's just not that creative. It's just a, here's a honk and here's some blur effects to make you feel like you're going faster. And let's just ram somebody. There's nothing that screams, wow, or like, wow, that's crazy. That's, that's really cool. Like, I could, I've never seen that before. It's just, yeah, it's just okay. So that's why I think 75 is a good place for the Dark Side Slam. At 74, we have another create a car special, but this time it's the laser in Twisted Metal 4. The laser essentially is a stripped down version of the same special weapon from RC car in the same game. However, this version is a lot worse because it just shoots straight at the floor most of the time, and it's a very short range. I don't know why this happened. According to our amazing god Pedro, who's made a lot of the TM4 mods, he has stated that apparently it's a glitch, it's a, it's a mix up, it wasn't meant to be that way. But of course, this does feel like a last second iteration concept for the creative car in general. So the fact that we got four specials to choose from is pretty remarkable as it is, so I'm not going to give them too much crap, and that's why this is a lot higher on the list than I probably would have put it otherwise. But the laser still does a decent amount of damage if you are able to hit the opponent, which is good, and it does light them on fire. But as I stated earlier, fire damage in TM4 is pretty much useless. Not a really a huge reason to hype about it. But yeah, the laser is just okay. It's not amazing. It's not terrible. It's just meh. So that's why 74 is a good place for the laser. And at 73, we have Talon's Mega Gun Turret from TM 2012. Talon, of course, is a special vehicle, the very first vehicle in the series to be fully flying. They're literally a helicopter. I don't like them. I hate them as a character in general, but I'm not going to take that away from the special weapon. And that's why they are higher on this list than I normally probably would have put them. But if I'm looking objectively at the special itself, it does a decent amount of damage. It doesn't have the best locking on mechanics. It, it sometimes will disconnect at random while you're trying to stay on the enemy in front of you. But if you are able to get every single bullet to hit somebody that you're aiming at, you can do a decent amount of damage with this special. But the main reason it's not any higher on the list is because it's very generic. It's literally just a Gatlin gun. There's nothing specialized for it. There's nothing that's unique or wow, that's crazy. And it is very annoying where if you get frozen while using it, the special is over and you fall to the ground. And because you're playing as Talon, you're probably going to get killed. So yeah, Mega Gun Turret, it's at 73. Next up at 72, we have Grasshopper's Leap and Slam from Twisted Metal 2 and Twisted Metal Head On. I know a lot of comments are probably going to roll in now for this one. Like, holy crap, you put Grasshopper's this high on the list? And I'm going to be honest with you guys, I really truly believe the special is not that terrible. Obviously, it's not amazing, otherwise it'd be even higher on the list, but I do feel it deserves a little bit of praise. I like the creativity of it. I like the idea of jumping in the air and using turbo and slamming into the opponent with your vehicle. But the fact that it's with such a tiny vehicle with low armor, I understand why it can be looked at as kind of useless. But in general, it does do decent damage, especially if you use a shield at the same time of your special. And that's why I'm definitely putting it higher than like TM2's Twister special, for instance, which in that situation, it feels more often than not, you just take more damage than you do give it. Where with Grasshoppers, I always feel like I can do damage a lot of times before I actually end up taking damage myself, if you know how to use it correctly. And in Twistmall Head On, there's no issues whatsoever when it comes to that. But it is lower on this list, mainly because of its damage output still isn't that amazing. Again, you can have the ability to get damage yourself in Twisted Metal 2, which is really annoying, but I just love that it has that wow spectacle to it. It's, it's a very unique special, and that's why it's got a special place in my heart, and I think 72 is a fair compromise spot for the Leap and Slam. Next up at 71 is Goggle Eyes Green Tox from Twisted Metal 4. Another special I'm probably going to get some hate for at putting it so high on this list, even though it's still in the 70s. It's not super high. But that being said, I know a lot of people really hate this special weapon, but honestly, coming back and using it for the footage for this video, I didn't hate it all that much. Yes, it does slow down the game tremendously. It literally tries to kill the game while you're using it, which is hilarious. But if you are able to freeze an opponent and get the entire green tox to engulf the enemy in front of you, it can do a decent amount of damage compared to other specials in the game. But that's where the goodness pretty much stops. I don't think it's that creative. It's just a green color over a flame effect, which is actually carried over from TM3, ironically. So they brought back the weird kind of physics of Firestarter's special weapon, where if you turn too slightly or too fast, it kind of wiggles and loses track of the enemy, so to speak. And 
I don't believe the Green Tox even does much fire damage after the fact because it is TM4. So all in all, it's okay. It's not amazing, but I do think it's a kind of unique idea in the sense that it's a, it's a bug guy using some type of bug repellent as his special weapon. So I do have to give them a little credit there. And that's why I think 71 is a fair place for the Green Tox. And moving on to number 70, we have Junkyard Dogs, Taxi Throw, Explosive Taxi, and Health Taxi in TM 2012. The reason I'm putting all three of these in the same spot is because they are honestly all kind of the same thing. The only difference is the health taxi is only usable in multiplayer, so it's actually useless or not even really be able to be used in the single player mode. So I'm mostly going to only be talking about the taxi throw and explosive taxi versions. In my opinion, the taxi throw is literally just a useless version of the explosive taxi. I don't know why anybody would use it over the explosive version. It's just that you're throwing a car at somebody and it does okay damage. But if you use the explosive taxi, not only do you get decent damage, it's explosive damage. So it actually sends out like a radius explosion that can do damage to multiple opponents at once. So I think that's by far the definitive version to use. But even then, it's still kind of lame. But the main reason I do have it at 70 on this list, which I think is a little higher than it deserves, is mainly because I think it still does a decent amount of damage compared to other special weapons in the game. And I love that this is what I ex originally wanted with Junkyard Dog in Twist Metal Black. I never liked the special weapon in Twist Metal Black in terms of its design. I thought it was just kind of a wasted potential. I always wanted it to actually be a hook that would grab a vehicle and you could chuck the vehicle at said opponent. And this is what we got. This is exactly what I wanted. So I just love that spectacle of it. I think anybody playing the game for the first time is going to laugh at that and think that's really cool. So that's why I think creativity alone gets it a lot of brownie points, at least in my opinion. And it's not a terrible special either. It's a little bit difficult to get good aim with it or to get it in the right spot. But if you have decent enough aim, you can get a pretty good amount of damage if you do get a direct hit with the explosive taxi. So that's why I'm putting it at number 70. Coming in at 69, we have Pit Viper's Sizzle from Twisted Metal 1. Now I know what you might be thinking. Yeah, this special kind of sucks in the grand scheme of things, but if you really genuinely look at every character in TM1, almost every special weapon is not that great to begin with. And this essentially is just the lesser version of Mr. Grimm special but it still does a decent amount of damage. It's about a medium hit, I should say, in terms of special weapons in Twist Metal 1. It's a skill shot. It shoots out straight in front of you. It doesn't have that much range, and it doesn't home in on the character. But I will say it does have a bigger hitbox than even Mr. Grimm's special, so you do have a more or a bigger chance of hitting somebody, which is nice, and it does do fire damage, which is cool to see. But that's pretty much it. I can't give it too much praise in terms of creativeness because, it's again, it's a skill shot just like almost every other special in the game. And it's just a green slime blob, basically. It's it's supposed to be acid, I get that, but it just it looks weird and it doesn't really stick out as like, whoa, that's crazy, that's super cool. So I think 69 is the perfect place for the sizzle. At 68, we have Talon coming back with the Mega Magnet in TM 2012. Now this one doesn't do nearly as much damage, I will say, as getting every single bullet from the gun turret. However, I wanted to put this one higher on the list mainly because of its creativeness. I love the idea of magnets in Twisted Metal. Being able to pick up a vehicle, bring them high in the sky, and throw them over a dam or whatever to take out fall damage is just hilarious to me. There's also some places in certain levels you can drop them down to lava or whatever, like in a crusher to do more damage, and which is really cool, but it, of course that doesn't necessarily make the special any better. It's just... It's just fun. It's got some cool creative ideas to it, and I gotta give him a leg up for that. So that's why the Mega Magnet from Talon is at number 68. Coming in at 67, we have Yellow Jacket's Molotov Cocktail in TM1. So just like Pit Viper Sizzle, it's just a straight shot skill shot special. It's a Molotov Cocktail that flies out in front of the vehicle. It does have a little bit more range in my testing than the Sizzle does with Pit Vipers, so that's why it's a little higher on the list. And it does basically the same amount of damage. It's like a medium amount of damage if you do get a direct hit on somebody, which is good to see. But again, nothing to write home about, nothing crazy. And because it is the first game in the series, I'm going to give the creativeness a little bit of a leeway for most of these special weapons. And I got to admit, a Molotov cocktail makes sense in a TM game. I like that they threw it out there right at the gate. And you get the iconic, yeah, coming from Yellow Jacket. So I got to give them a 67. Coming in at 66, we have Minion with their Serpent in TM4. I know it's kind of funny seeing Minion this low on the list. Uh, I never thought I'd see the day, 
but the serpent special weapon in TM4 is just really bad. It's not like the worst thing, of course. There's obviously worse specials in the game, but in my opinion, this is by far the worst minion special in any game, and I think it really just puts a really big sour taste in my mouth because it is a boss character. But I think my biggest issue with the special weapon is the tracking of the two missiles that do damage. Because a serpent is actually two missiles and a freeze missile, all three coming out at the same time to attack the enemy, just like we got in TM2 and TM3 before it. But for some reason this time around, the two extra missiles miss almost every single time. It's super annoying, it doesn't make any sense, but if you are able to get a direct hit where all three, the freeze and the two missiles, hit the enemy, it does a decent amount of damage, if not a great amount of damage compared to other specials in the game. And it freezes the enemy on top of it. So that's why I personally feel 66 is a fair place for Minions, Serpent, and TM4. Now moving on to 65, we're at Junkyard Dogs, Death Ball, in Twist Metal Black and Twist Metal Lost. I know I stated earlier that I'm not a huge fan of the design of this special weapon, but I cannot hide from the fact that it actually is a pretty devastating and useful special in Twist Metal Black and Lost. Yes, it's basically a rehash version of the gas can in these games, where it just launches up in the air, and you have a certain amount of time before the target is over your enemy, and you have to click the fire button again to detonate it on said enemy to do damage. It's basically a skill shot special weapon, it, but just with an extra step, in a way. <laughs> but it's still pretty cool. I like that it's got a big blast radius, it does a decent amount of damage, especially if you get direct hit. But again, the fact that it is just a rehash version of the gas can and it doesn't have that much wow factor to it, the creativity really brings it down a few notches for me, and that's why I think 65 is a fair place for Junkyard Dog Special. At 64, we have Roadkill's Spike Bomb from Twisted Metal 3. Now this one I know is going to surprise a couple people. I've seen other lists of people's special weapons in the past, and people always put Roadkill's Spike Bomb pretty much dead last, or like in the bottom five on the list. Like they, they really hate this one. They think it's just useless or it's terrible. The one thing I'll agree with everybody's criticism with the special weapon is that yes, it is just a rehash version of the mortar, uh, which isn't that great of a, of, a, of a weapon, I will admit. It just kind of shoots up in the air and it kind of randomly spirals and sometimes can do a direct hit on some people and do okay damage, but for the most part, it misses 90% of the time. However, I will say right now, I'm putting my channel and my reputation on the line that I believe the spike bomb is only bad if you have a skill issue. I am saying that and I mean it 1000%. If you know what distance you need to be away from the character to use the special weapon, you can do a decent amount of damage with the spike bomb and you can actually use it pretty effectively. Not only that, if you freeze an enemy and run up to them and you shoot it right before you run into somebody, you can do a decent amount of damage with a direct hit that way as well. Yes, you will take damage yourself, so it's kind of like a last resort type situation with this special, but for me, I've always liked Roadkill in TM3. I've never had a big issue using his special weapon, I do like the design of it just being like a spiky ball and it again does have a decent range with it so you can get people from far distances away and you don't have to be right up next to somebody. But it's not higher on my list because again it's not very creative it's pretty much a rehash of a weapon that's already in the game and it does take quite a bit of skill I will admit to actually get to use it effectively. So I understand why people put it lower on their lists but I think 64 is where I want it on mine. Moving on to 63, we're coming back to Dark Side with their 50 cal mini chain gun, as well as drop mines in Twisted Metal 2012. Now, the reason I'm putting both the chain gun and the drop mines together again is because they really just feel the same to me in terms of damage output and usefulness. So that's why I'm putting them in the same place in this list. But that being said, they're not terrible by any means. I think either one of them does a decent amount of damage in terms of 2012 specials, and they're very useful in their own rights. The chain gun is relatively the same as Outlaw special in both 2012 and Black, where you don't necessarily have to be aiming at anybody, it looks at anybody in near proximity, you just hold down the fire button, let it do its thing, and you try to hope that every bullet hits somebody. If you are able to get every single bullet on somebody, boom, you just did a really devastating special weapon. And then dropping mines is literally dropping mines, like it just drops six of those little mines in the back that come out of Juggernaut, and it does a pretty good amount of damage if every single one hits somebody. And it's also nice just to get away from people if you're trying to run away to health or something. You drop them behind you, it sends people flying, and you're pretty much safe to go. However, they're not higher on this list because they're both generic. And there's nothing special about these weapons. They've been used in other places, especially even in 2012 themselves. So, yeah, it's just a... I don't know. It's a, it's a bummer because they're okay, 
in their own right and they're they're strong and they are useful but they just don't give me any wow factor there's no creativity here there's something that i'm like that's a dark side special you know what i mean even if they would have brought back the flamethrower special from tm3 or something for dark side i think i would have preferred that a lot more but yeah we got a gatlin gun and dropping mines so 63 it is coming at 62 we have another created car special this is the detno ball in tm4 the detno ball is a skill shot just like a power missile it shoots out straight and you can detonate it at will whenever you like now the thing is it does not go through walls or anything like that so it's not the same as the detno ball from twisted metal 3 with sweet tooth special it's a little bit weaker in my opinion but it is really useful against bigger enemies so if you hit somebody like trash man or goggle eyes they can go flying out of the game and you can get an insta kill with the death planes it's actually hilarious the special by itself isn't that strong especially if you have to detonate it yourself it's only useful if you get direct hits on people but i will admit getting direct hits does pretty good damage it, it's a relatively medium amount of damage maybe even a little less than that but again the the major benefit of the special is hitting people out of the game like trash man or goggle eyes anybody that's a bigger vehicle that can essentially take advantage of the silly physics of tm4 but yeah the main reason it's not higher on this list is because it's nothing super special it's just a straight up missile that shoots straight out of the vehicle and again it's very useless if you don't get a direct hit so that's why i feel the detno ball is fair to be at 62. at number 61 we have brimstone's sinner bomber from twisted metal black this is probably another one people are scratching their heads like wow i'm really surprised this isn't lower on the list because it's pretty bad and in terms of twist about black special weapons i will admit it's probably the worst one in the game if not pretty close to the worst one in the game but i am 1000 percent giving it a huge leg up because of its creativity i absolutely love the special weapon in terms of its plot and its design and its wow factor i mean the first time i saw this and i probably shouldn't have this early on in my life but as a kid when i first saw this i was blown away that they allowed this to happen and that they got away with it because you are literally impaling a real live human on the front of your vehicle. He's squirming around, you know, freaking out as he's got a bomb strapped to his chest. And then you shoot him onto other vehicles to then repent and explode on impact. It's just such a badass idea. I absolutely love it. It's just a huge shame he doesn't do more damage. It is nice, though. It does do a little bit of a homing capability, so you don't have to be super accurate with your throw but it is a little slow so most of the time it will miss unless you're re really directly in front of somebody so yeah the main issues with the special is it's not super accurate and it sadly does not do much damage and the last little thing i will give it as another leg up and the reason why it is higher on my list is because even if someone shields it still will blow up and do damage unless they shield before the bomber gets on top of the car I always thought that was a cool little like detail they added to the game that I didn't even notice until later on when I was replaying these games where I would have him land on my car. I would do a shield, but it still wouldn't save me from death. And I always thought that was really interesting, which is kind of cool because you can hear the bomber flying at you from a mile away. So it makes sense why they did it. And again, just a cool little detail. So that's why I think the center bomber deserves its place at 61. And moving on to number 60, we have Roadkill with their Boomerang Blast from Twist Metal 2 and Twist the Metal Head On. I will admit this was going to be a lot lower on my list, mainly because it's a skill issue on my part. I am really terrible at getting the Boomerang to come back and hit an opponent to do extra damage. However, after trying it my absolute hardest and finally getting it to happen, I have seen the light and I understand why people love this special weapon. It is really unique, I gotta admit, I love the creativity of a boomerang being a special weapon in TM2 and in TM head-on. It doesn't really make a whole lot of sense, but it's really fun just throwing it out there, seeing it whip around, and then come back and possibly get somebody on the return. And like I stated, if you get somebody on the return hit, it does double the amount of damage. It's actually pretty devastating in TM2. In head-on, it's not nearly as devastating, and the really weird thing is they made the original shot home in on the opponents which it kind of does that on TM2, but very minimally, and that's on purpose because it doesn't want to try to hit somebody immediately because it wants to do that return hit. So in head-on, it homes in so much that you almost never get the chance to do the return hit and essentially making that part of it useless. But I'm still putting these together because it's the same concept and it's the same special relatively, and they both do decent damage. If you do hit the boomerang on the first hit, though, it is pretty weak. In, in a sense, I used to think it was useless and pretty lame, 
But again, it's all about hitting it on that return. But there's a huge skill gap there, and that's why I think it's kind of fair to have it lower on the list than much higher, because it's definitely not the best special in the game. Nowhere is it near that. But I have to give it some leg up for the creativity, and again, for that extra skill gap, leading the player to get better with the special weapon, and it actually is pretty decent. So I think 60 is a fine place for Roadkill's Boomerang Blast. Now moving into 50s, at 59, we had the Create a Car final special weapon, which is the Funny Bomb in Twisted Metal 4. The Funny Bomb is by far the best version that you can choose for the special weapons in the Create a Car section. Essentially, it's just a mortar that explodes multiple times when it hits the ground. So think of Roadkill's special from TM3 with a little less range, but once it hits the ground, instead of a big explosion, it just kind of does a ton of mini explosions where if you can get somebody to stay in place, it can do a devastating amount of damage. But that's very rare when it happens. But when it does, I mean, it's pretty damn awesome. But the fact that it's pretty rare when that happens, and most of the time, I'd say at least 9 out of 10 times, you'll probably get one blast to hit somebody and then they'll go sent flying and they don't do a whole lot of damage. It's more of a crowd control special, in my opinion, for sending people flying. So it's okay. It's not amazing. It's not terrible by any means, but it's just okay. So that's why I think the funny bomb is fair to be placed at 59. And at 58, we have Kamikaze with the flamethrower from TM 2012. Again, I'm not a huge fan of the flamethrower concept in TM games. I think it's just, it's been in every movie or whatever in every concept. It's just not creative. It's just kind of meh. But I will say the flamethrower in Kamikaze is pretty effective. It's very, very strong, if not one of the strongest specials in the game for the regular vehicles, that is. They're a very fast vehicle, so you can get around danger really easily and get up and close and personal with people without much issue. And it does last for quite a while to be pretty devastating, even if you're not super accurate. Not only that, if you tap the fire button while the flamethrower is going, it will shoot out these little fireballs to get a little bit of an extra range boost. So if you're not super close to somebody to get flamethrower on them, you can still hurt somebody from a distance. So the flamethrower is a relatively useful special weapon. Now, the reason it's not higher on this list is because it's a flamethrower. It's just not that creative and it's not that fun to use. It's just kind of lame. You hit a button and you, you watch it burn somebody while you're driving around them, try not to get killed yourself, and then you rinse and repeat. It's something super amazing or anything to write home about. So that's why I think the flamethrower from Kamikaze is just fine at number 58. Moving on to 57, this is going to be no surprise to anybody, but Crimson Fury's Flamethrower and Flamethrower Shockwave from Twisted Metal 2012, because it's literally the same special as Kamikaze's. There is pretty much no difference in damage. There might be a little minute difference if someone out there on the 2012 spectrum of elite players might know the answer to this, but I feel it's the exact same Flamethrower as Kamikaze's. However, it's a little bit higher on the list, literally one step above, because of the Flamethrower Shockwave. I think this is a cool concept. It's literally Axel's Shockwave special, but it does fire damage, and it sends people flying for good crowd control. It's really nice to get away from people on the go, and the reason I didn't separate it like I did Kamikaze's Freeze Blast is because it's not a different special. It's, it's still the Flamethrower, but just used in a different way effectively. So that's why I feel it deserves to be in the same place as the, the regular flamethrower and why I put them a little bit above kamikazes. But you can interchange any either of these and I think it would be fine. And moving on to number 56, we have Axel's Missile Barrage in Twisted Metal Small Brawl. This is a sleeper. A lot of people seem to really crap on Axel. Man, even the lead designer himself, David Goodrich, has told me straight up he hates Axel and thinks he's bad. I am here to say he is wrong. No, I'm, d I'm just playing. But in reality, I do think Axel is really not that bad in Small Brawl. He could be better. I'm not going to lie. Like, obviously, his armor could be better and all that. But we're not talking about the vehicle. We're talking about the special weapon. Essentially, it's a skill shot. You shoot out a little missile that has very, very low tracking. It's essentially a power missile if you look at it that way. But if you hit somebody with it, then Axel will begin to spin around, kind of like Twister with their tornado and it'll start shooting random missiles out that will home in on the opponent that you hit with your original missile. And if you are able to get every single missile to hit somebody, it honestly does a really decent amount of damage compared to other specials in the game. I'd say about a medium to a little bit higher than that special in terms of damage, but I think the biggest issue with this special is the skill part of it. Getting that original missile to hit somebody can be frustrating, and in many times it can feel like BS when it just hits the floor or somebody turns the last second and it goes past them and hits a wall and 
In that case, all you do is spin in a circle and throw missiles on the ground and it does nothing but leave you kind of vulnerable. So I totally get why people aren't a huge fan of Axel, but I think the creativity here is why I'm putting it higher on the list than it probably should be. I love that Axel this time around doesn't just have his generic shockwave. I know in Twistmail Black they did introduce the ability for him to go inside the wheels and crush people and I think that's awesome, but I still feel like this version of the special is a little bit better. But that being said, I still like that they went completely away from the shockwave here to just give him something a little bit more unique, even if it's a little bit more difficult to use for the player. And moving on to 55, we got Crusher with their Crusher special weapon from TM4. I'm not even kidding, it is called Crusher. I, I, I don't know if that's an inside joke or what, but uh, yeah. <laughs> so Crusher's special essentially is Mr. Slam's bucket slam special, just in a different form factor. He looks like a giant duck. That's kind of like the whole joke on the channel as well with my whole pog emote is Crusher pogging, essentially. But he uses his duck beak to crush cars. He puts a car in there and starts crushing up and down and and the reason he's in the 50s on this list is mainly because he does a decent amount of damage. I can't deny that. He's not the greatest. He's very slow. The car itself is pretty mid. But if we're looking at special weapon alone, the damage output is pretty decent. It's not amazing. And there is other actual vehicles in the game that do crushing maneuvers just like this that actually do it a little bit better. But I got to hand it to Crusha for uh, being pretty decent. And then on top of that, I'm giving it a little bit more brownie points, mainly because of its design. I, I absolutely love the duck bill design of this car. And then you the, just the uniqueness of it. It does have a wow factor. I'm not going to lie. I can't tell you how many times as a kid playing this level, how afraid I was of Crusher the first few times I saw him. It just is a very intimidating looking vehicle. You can't deny that. So, yeah, it's not the greatest special in the world. It could last a little bit longer, if I'm being honest with you, while it's crushing somebody. But it does a decent amount of damage for what it does. And I wish it was a little easier to get vehicles to get inside the crusher. It's kind of the same issue I had with Augur. But it does do a decent amount of damage to where I can easily say 55 is a good place for the crusher. And at 54, we have Roadboat again with their Mega Magnet from TM 2012. The Mega Magnet is different from their original Magnet Projectile Special, and the main reason I say that is because it is the second version of said special, and instead of throwing stuff at people, you actually suck people into yourself, and they get attached to the vehicle through your big magnet, and then, not only that, but you can throw people across the map. It's, it's a wonderful sight to see. It's absolutely hilarious. Now I know I've dogged in Roadboat many times in my videos, and I still think the vehicle overall sucks big penises, but I am putting the special weapon higher on this list mainly because of just its uniqueness, it's creative. I love magnets, man, what can I say? And not only that, but you can do a pretty good amount of damage if you run somebody into a wall while they're stuck in the magnet, it does like a damage bonus, or of course if you throw them off a ledge of a level that takes fall damage, you can do extra damage that way. So I like the creativity of the Mega Magnet, and that's why I'm giving it a lot of brownie points, even if the special itself doesn't do a whole lot in terms of damage or like, you know, it's not as like useful as other special weapons can be in the game. But again, Roadboat sucks ass, but their special weapon is pretty cool. So that's why I think 54 is a fair place for it. Moving on to 53, we have Trashman's Lifter in TM4. It's kind of a generic name, but it's also a generic special weapon. It's just a rehash of Mr. Slam's special where you pick up vehicles. But the cool thing is they do have spikes on top of the vehicle that I think add a little bit extra character to it. And you're essentially smashing the vehicles into the spikes. The thing I love about Trashman special though in TM4 is how long it lasts. I don't remember as a kid like having this special last as long as it actually does coming back and getting footage for this video. And I gotta say that the, the lifter special for Trashman, it almost feels like overkill in some ways, but it really does do a lot of damage. It's pretty useful in most fights. The other thing that's really cool about it, and I know that this is a factor for pretty much every special in the game that involves picking characters up, but you can do combos. Like you can literally start shooting them with other missiles or freeze them or whatever while they're in your lifter special. So I feel that's a fair thing to add to the assessment here and why I think it's a little bit higher on the list than like Crusher special, for instance, even though they pretty much are the same concept in terms of creativity. But yeah, I think Lifter is pretty decent and that's why 53 is a fair spot for it. And at 52, we have Roadkill with their Zoomy Rockets, Chain Gun Combo, and Mind Drop in TM 2012. 
obviously these three things sound completely different they could be their own separate categories but i was really thinking about this and i was like you know what i probably put these all around the same spot anyway so instead of adding more numbers to this list why not just all condense it into one and we'll put it at 52. so roadkill special in tm 2012 is this, almost the exact same thing as death warrant and essentially it's a gatlin gun that shoots a ton of chain gun ammo at the character in front of you it does a decent amount of damage by itself but if you switch it to the secondary mode of its special, you can then hold it down a second time and release these zoomy rockets on top of the chain gun bullets to do an extra combo damage. And it's absolutely devastating if you can get every single rocket to hit the person in front of you. It's actually really useful and really fun to do if you can pull it off properly. And then there is a third version of his special where you can drop mines behind you just like Dark Sides. There is literally no difference to it. I don't know why they gave it to Roadkill as well, but hey shit it's it's here right so cool but all that being said even though the damage output is pretty decent there is a little bit of a skill gap there so i'm going to bring it down a couple notches because of that and it's just not creative the the only creative part of the, about this whole thing is azumi rockets i do love the look of them and to mix it with the chain gun is really cool but it's just not like a super wow factor for me it's just okay it's not bad it's not terrible but i would have much rather had them bring back the boomerang or something like that I think would have been way better but it is what it is and i think it's still a very decent special with a lot of damage to give so 52 is a proper place for it and coming in at 51 we have sweet tooth the napalm cone from twisted metal one two and head on i understand these three games have really different versions of the napalm cone but come on it's all the same special same kind of concept it's just a random flaming cone that flies out of the front of the vehicle. It does home in a little bit on the character in head on oh, and in TM2 as well. Now that I think about it, but in TM1, it is a straight skill shot, just like Yellow Jacket's Molotov cocktail, but it ends up doing a little bit more damage actually than Yellow Jacket's. So that's why it's a little higher on the list. And in TM2, it does a decent amount of damage compared to other specials in the game. And it even does knockback damage which essentially sends characters flying off edges on levels such as New York, which is really cool to see. And then in head on, it's just a flaming version of it. Really, it just sets people on fire. I don't believe it does any knockback like it did in TM2, but it looks the exact same. So they're all relatively really close to each other, and that's why I'm putting them in the same category. And I don't necessarily hate these specials. I think they're all OK in their own regard, in their own right. But I don't understand the, the, the design of TM2's and head on's special weapon. Like, TM1, it makes sense. It, it literally is a flaming ice cream cone that just it looks like a Molotov cocktail. But in TM2, it just is like a pink blob, a pink floating blob. I really wish it would have actually looked like ice cream or an ice cream cone or something to make it make more sense, but it is what it is. And then Head On just literally copied TM2s, even though they had a better graphics engine and they could have made it look like ice cream. But regardless, the creativity is still there. I think it looks interesting, to say the least, for what it is. And again, it is useful. I like these specials. They're, they're just mid they're very mid and that's why i think 51 is a fine place for the sweet tooth napalm cone and coming in at number 50 oh my god we're halfway through the list thank jesus it's crimson fury with his paper airplane assault in twisted metal small brawl this special weapon i think i like it more on the creative side than i do on the usefulness side don't get me wrong, it's still a fine special. It does decent damage if you can get every single paper airplane to hit the enemy, and it does leave fire damage, which actually is pretty useful in Small Brawl. But the biggest thing here that I really like about the paper airplane assault is just the fact that it's paper airplanes that are on fire flying at a character. I just think that's so cool. It's very creative, especially for all the characters being RC vehicles. It makes sense. It doesn't necessarily correlate to anything that Crimson Fury has done prior to this game, but to be fair, in Small Brawl, believe it or not, this was the first time Crimson Fury made it back into the series since the very first one. So, well, we got to head to Small Brawl for bringing Crimson Fury back, and I love seeing that in the game. It does take a little bit of skill to aim it properly. You can't be too close to anybody. It's more of a medium to long range weapon than it is an up close weapon. That's why I'm not giving it higher than a 50, but I think it is like a perfect middle set special weapon that you can't really go wrong with it, but it also isn't going to like blow you away. And at number 49, we have Death Warrant with the Zoomy Missiles and Chain Gun Combo from TM2012. Now, if this special weapon sounds familiar, that's literally because it's the same thing as Roadkill Special. Who would have known? 
But this one's a little higher on the list and for only one reason. It's because it, for some reason, recharges incredibly fast. Like almost as soon as you use one of Death Warrant specials, you can literally use it again. I think somebody did the math on it or they did the testing and technically the chain gun does more damage with roadkill special overall. But the fact that this one recharges so much quicker, you can literally use three of Death Warrant specials in the same time frame as one of road kills. It's that quick. It's kind of insane. But again, it's just like the same thing where you charge it up once and if you let go and then charge it up a second time, you can use the zooming missiles on top of the chain gun to do extra damage. It looks really cool. It's very fun to use and it does medium, you know, decent damage all around. But again, because the special recharge is so fast, it's honestly a huge plus for me with death warrant over roadkill in this game. So all the exact same criteria I said for roadkill applies to death warrant. And that's why I think 49 is a fine place to put it. And at number 48 here, we have RC car with the laser from TM4. I am very notorious for saying I dislike RC car in general as a vehicle in TM4. I, I don't think they should be a boss. I think they're stupid, but it is what it is. This is not about the vehicle, as I've stated before. This is about the special and the laser is decent. You know, it does decent damage. I'd say medium damage. It does fire damage as well. It does set the people on fire if you get a direct hit and it's got relatively good range. It's not broken where it shoots the floor in front of it like the create a car version of the laser. It's what it's supposed to be. And the character is low enough to the ground where you don't have to worry about shooting it over too many characters. I think the only one in the game that I can think of off the top of my head that it does shoot over them is Microblast. But to be honest, most specials miss Microblast, so I'm not going to deter any points because of that. The only place I'm really taking away the points for the laser is the creativity. It's nothing to write home about. It's nothing eye-catching. It's something amazing. It's just, I honestly would argue the character itself is more eye-catching than the laser itself even though I hate the character, but because this is about the special and not the character, it's that's why it's not any higher on this list, even though I think the damage output's pretty decent. And it's, it is a skill shot, you know, it doesn't home in on the character, it doesn't have auto aim, you do have to aim it right down the middle. So that's why I think middle of the road's pretty a fine place for it at 48. And at number 47, we got Trapper with the Monkeys in a Barrel from Twisted Metal Small Brawl. Trapper is the mid-tier boss, essentially taking the place of Minion from previous games. And I do love Trapper's design in this game. I think he's really cool. I, I don't really miss Minion all that much because of Trapper being as iconic as he is in Small Brawl. However, I am very disappointed in the special weapon this time around because the special when you're going against him as a boss is devastating. It's very strong, it's very accurate, and it seems to last forever. Where when you play as him, it's almost the exact opposite. It's not as accurate. You can shoot somebody immediately, but then the monkeys will just break off and disappear. They, ne they almost never bounce off walls and come back like they're supposed to. Not only that, I feel like it doesn't do nearly as much damage when the monkeys attack people like the boss does against the player. And just the fact that it kind of feels like a slap in the face as the player going through the pain of unlocking the character to not have it be as strong as it is when you go against him. It just kind of feels like why do we play why why can i play as him like what's the point of this right so even though i think the monkeys in a barrel by itself is an okay special weapon it's just the fact that in the same game we're able to compare it to a much bigger badder version of it it just really makes this special feel inferior and that's why it's not higher on this list so monkeys in a barrel is at 47. at 46 we have sweet tooth's sweet bomb from tm3 Yes, that you heard me right. I I do. I will stand by this. I think TM3's Sweet Tooth special weapon is better than TM2's, TM1's, or TM head-ons. I'm not a hater of the ice cream cone version, but I just I truly think the Sweet Bomb is a better special weapon, especially if you're looking at it in the context of TM3. He shoots his flaming head straight out in front of the character, just like the original Sweet Tooth with a skill shot. However, it's like Spectre's special where for some reason it can go through walls. You can do some pretty remarkable things with the special weapon. And not only that, but you can detonate it on command to do an insane amount of damage when you're comparing it to other TM3 special weapons. In my opinion, it's actually even better than Mr. Grimm's special weapon, which is the same thing as every other Mr. Grimm where it's a straight skill shot, which is supposed to do devastating damage because he's a glass cannon. However, Sweet Tooth's Sweet Bomb does more damage than Mr. Grimm's. 
And not only that, but it sends characters hilariously flying through the air and can even cause insta death in certain situations with the kill planes like you can in TM4. So yeah, Sweet Tooth Sweet Bomb is pretty badass. The only reason it's not any higher on this list, or like the, I guess if I was to talk about some negatives for it, is mainly it's really difficult, like insanely difficult to get a direct hit with this special weapon. You almost have to detonate it yourself every time. Thus, you're not getting the full amount of that damage. And on top of that, it's pretty much just like a rehash version of the very original Sweet Tooth special weapon. So to me, the Sweet Bomb is really good, but it's not amazing, and it's definitely far from terrible. So that's why I feel like 46 is just fine as a placement. And coming at number 45 is Juggernaut's Drop Mines from TM2012. I'm going to be honest with you guys, the only reason this one's so high up on the list is because of how strong and devastating these drop mines are. I will say that it's pretty impossible to get all of them to hit one vehicle specifically, but you can literally send people flying out of this game and get insta kills if you were to drift the vehicle and smash people with running into the mines. It kind of does like a mix of ram damage with the mine damage to do an insta kill. It's pretty devastating. Now I know a lot of that has to come to the ram damage of Juggernaut being absolutely broken, and I know that's not a special weapon here, we're just talking about the mines, but the fact that you can chuck them in front of you is a huge play. Not only can you drop them behind you like any other car with mines in this game, and they do the same amount of damage, you get a ton of them. I think it's like six or eight on each side, I don't really remember the exact number, but you can drop them fully behind you to do damage that way, or send them again flying forward, doing some devastating damage. But other than that, they're not creative. I mean, they're they're landmines, right? There's nothing super crazy there, and and they're reused on a ton of different characters in this game. So those are some mega, in my opinion, setbacks, and that's why it's not higher on the list. So I think 45 is a fair place for the drop mines. And coming in at 44, we have Vermin with the Rat Rocket from TM2012. This also does include the piloted Rat Rocket version as well, because they're both the same thing. It's the rocket on top of the car. I love the design of this vehicle, and I like the idea of being able to shoot a rocket that's always on top of the vehicle ready to go. It's kind of what RC car, in my opinion, should have been in TM4, with that giant like looking laser pill thing on top of the car. That should have just been a rocket that you can send at people. That would have been super cool. Anyway, the rat rocket is pretty decent by itself. It does pretty low damage, though, if you just shoot it normally but it has really good homing capabilities and it refills pretty quickly. So it comes in handy pretty often. It's pretty much the same amount of damage as a regular power missile, but it does home in on the character, which is nice to see. However, the big show here is the piloted rat rocket. I will admit that it's very difficult to pilot said rocket once you launch it off the vehicle, but once you get good with it, you can home in on enemies. And if you get a direct hit on that thing, it'll do hundred damage, which is insane for 2012. Now, the biggest downside to being the pilot, though, is you're leaving your car stranded out in the middle of nowhere without anybody driving it, and thus you can take damage and get frozen and stuff like that. And sadly, if you do get frozen while you're in the pilot stage, it will blow up the rocket and you lose your special weapon. And now, again, you're vulnerable to the elements. So that's why it does get some knocked points for that. And again, the regular mode without piloting it doesn't do a whole lot of damage, so it's just kind of mid. But I do have to give it some leg up for the creativity of a rat rocket is just hilarious to me. And yeah, I think this is pretty fine at being at 44. And coming in at 43, we have Orbital with the Telorb in TM4. Fun fact, the original special weapon for Orbital was supposed to be some type of vortex. Like they would shoot the Telorb out and it would suck people into it and send them somewhere else in the level. It would be like a hyperspace essentially. They ended up changing it to a freeze missile, however, because I, I guess they just assumed it made more sense to be more effective. And I got to admit, it, it does make more sense to do it this way because now you can create a combo machine, in a, if you will. So when you shoot the Telover, it creates a very strong, essentially a magnetic field, if you will. It essentially has a electricity field that grabs people and sucks them towards the freeze. And once they're frozen, obviously they're stuck in place for a few seconds and you can just kind of go ham on them with your missiles of choice. The special itself doesn't do really any damage though, and that's my biggest issue with the Telorb and why I know some people out there are probably thinking this should be higher on the list, and there's a lot of people saying, ew, TM4, that should be lower. But if you're looking at it objectively, I think middle of the road is probably the perfect place for this because yes, you can set yourself up for some good combos, and yes, you can use the Telorb to bring people out of the game in certain funny situations to do insta-kills, I understand speedrunners use it as well and it makes sense, 
But for me, I've never been a huge fan of the Telor because it's really just a freeze missile. That's an extra benefit of having the pull feature that bring people towards it. Once you look past that, there's really nothing to write home about it. It looks really cool. I like the creativity of its design, but that's pretty much it. I mean, it's just a freeze missile in the end. So that's why I think the Telorb is fair at a 43. And at number 42, we have Axel with the War Wheel, which is in Twist Metal Black and 2012. The War Wheel I actually mentioned earlier in the video essentially is where he collapses his wheels in on himself and he has spikes come out the top and he can run over vehicles and do extra damage that way instead of using his iconic supernova effect. But I have to admit, as much as I actually prefer this special weapon over the supernova because it's just more unique, it's it makes more sense for his two giant wheels to come in and protect him and to be able to crush vehicles with it, it sadly isn't as strong or as effective as a supernova. And we'll of course get to that later in this ranking. But for the war wheel, I think it's cool in the sense of its creativity and it does do decent damage in both games. I will admit though, it is a little bit lower on this list than I would have put it normally if we were just talking about the 2012 version, but I'm putting them both together because they are essentially the exact same special weapon. But the Twisted Metal Black version is a much weaker version of the War Wheel. It just doesn't do nearly as much damage and half of the time you can't even tell you're actually using it. Like, yes, obviously there's an animation and the wheels cover Axel and it looks really cool, but then when you're actually trying to run somebody over in black, it almost... You can't tell if you've done it, except you just have to look at their health and see if it went down at all. Whereas in 2012, it makes it quite obvious when you run someone over with it. And it even says at the top of the screen how much damage you've done, which is really nice. I do understand that in Black Online, the War Wheel is a lot more effective and apparently it's broken, but I'm not taking that into consideration here with this list. This is strictly just the single player games. So yeah, it's a very creative and cool concept, but just doesn't do that much damage. So that's why I think 42 is a fine place for the War Wheel. And at 41, we have Sweet Tooth, the Sweet Bot Laughing Ghost Head slash Sweet Bot in Twisted Metal 2012. What does that mean, the Sweet Bot? Uh, if you guys have seen any trailers for 2012 if you, or if you've played it, you know what I'm talking about, where he transforms into a giant mech suit. I don't understand it. I don't like it. I think it's way over the top and useless, but a lot of people would disagree with me that, with that, and I, I get it. But that being said, we're not talking about that. We're talking about just the special weapon itself. And according to the TM wiki, they do state that just transforming into the robot is a special in itself, but I don't agree with that. I think the main special for Sweet Tooth in this game is his head that he can send flying after people. And ironically, it's kind of a mixture of Twisted Metal 3's special and a mixture of TM2 special. So it's a mixture of TM2 special in the sense that it homes in on the opponent. And then it's TM3 special where it goes through walls and explodes on contact. So it's even like a mixture of Spectre special if you think of it that way. But it's not very strong, and I will say that. It does home in on enemies. It can go pretty far you can, from big distances, and it goes through walls and the floor and all that stuff to get to the enemy. So it's very difficult to actually miss the shot unless the enemy is using a shield of some sort. But once you actually hit somebody with it, it ends up just not doing that much damage at all which ends up being kind of a bummer. So I don't know. That's why I feel like it's kind of middle of the road. I know a lot of people really love this special and I'm hoping I'm not offending anybody with this placement. But for me, I would have rather had it either do more damage or just something creatively new. Like just you, you give me a reason to use a sweet bot instead of just giving me the same special, whether I'm in the, the robot version or if I'm not. And I do know there is a second attack when you're in the sweet bot where you can actually smash the ground and do a shockwave effect but again that's just like okay now you're using axle special so nothing crazy there nothing creative in my opinion it's just a mixture of other ideas that in essence kind of makes me feel like this should have been specter special and why is specter not here so 41 is its placement and moving on to 40 is going to be yellow jacket stingers and twist metal black and lost now this special is insanely cool. I think it definitely gets extra brownie points and why it's higher up on this list, mainly because of its creativity alone. It doesn't do a whole lot of damage compared to other specials in the game, but I like the ability that you have two essential different specials in one. So you get these spikes that come up around the entire vehicle and you can either A, shoot them out at will to where they'll shoot out on all sides, hitting anybody around you and doing a little bit of damage. It's pretty minute or you can ram into people and send the spikes right into the vehicle doing extra damage. 
and you can even get like a boost on the damage by using turbo. So yeah, the stingers are a really cool concept. I absolutely love the look of them. They're just very grimy and badass, and they fit the world of TM Black so well that I really wish to see them come back in a future video game, and of course to get Yellow Jacket back as well. But really my only critique with the special weapon is just I wish it did more damage in general. I think it does a decent amount of damage for ramming somebody, but in order to get that close to someone and of course ram them, you, it should give you a little bit extra damage than it actually does because Yellow Jacket's not that strong of a vehicle in terms of his armor. So risking ramming into other characters like that, it, it's kind of a big ask for a game like TM Black with how fast that gameplay is. And thus, yeah, I just wish the damage was a little bit higher. But for what it is, I think it's definitely fair to be putting it at the 40 ranking. Coming in at number 39, we have Shadow Raven Gunner from Twist Metal Black and TM Lost. So the Raven Gunner is actually a hidden special for Shadow in Twist Metal Black. Basically, if you tap three times on the directional pad up, the character of Raven will come out the top of the vehicle on a floating chair and shoot a gallon gun at any character near you, basically imitating Outlaw's special. I have absolutely no idea why this is implemented or why they thought this was anything that needed to be in the game. It's kind of cool. I mean, it does a decent amount of damage if you can get every bullet to hit somebody. But more often than not, I just end up using the regular special anyway. But it, either way, you can't deny it's still very strong and it's kind of cool. It, it is unique. It is creative. So that's why it is at 39 on my list. At number 38, we have Meat Wagon with its Gurney Bomber and the piloted Gurney Bomber in TM 2012. Now, just like Vermin from the ranking before with the Rat Rocket, it's almost the same special weapon with the Gurney, except it doesn't fly. So it's actually a lot easier to control and to get a direct hit. However, it doesn't do as much damage, but it's not very far behind. The piloted Rat Rocket can do 100 damage with a direct hit, and the Gurney Bomber can do 90. So still a very devastating hit or blow if you actually end up hitting anybody while doing the piloted attack. But it's the same downsides as using the Rat Rocket, where if you're in the piloted mode, you're leaving your vehicle open to the elements with nobody driving it. So anybody can come up and freeze you, which cuts your special short, or they can damage you and do what they want. And it is a risk and reward type factor. However, I think the biggest benefit to Meat Wagon and why he is higher up on the list is just doing the regular Gurney Bomber. It's not as accurate as the Rat Rocket, I will admit. However, it still does a decent amount of damage. I think it's like 45 or 50 damage on a direct hit with the Gurney Bomber without doing the piloted mode. And that's still pretty damn impressive for a special weapon in 2012. And it just looks really cool. It's, su it's super badass. It's very creative. It is technically an inspiration or like a straight ripoff from Rogue Trip. But I'm going to put that aside for right now and just say that it's still a very creative special weapon. I love Meat Wagon in TM 2012. Yes, I love the meats. And that's why I think 38 is a fine place for it. Number 37 is going to be Sweet Tooth Ricochet Ice Cream Cone in Twisted Metal Small Brawl. So for Sweet Tooth in the past, he seems like he has almost had a different special weapon in every single game. And I think that's for a good cause. I think it's cool to kind of switch it up and make him different every single time. And I think this is by far one of the most creative special weapons in terms of Sweet Tooth in Twisted Metal, and that it's a ice cream cone that is gliding around on the ground. It can go through characters, or like it hits somebody, right? But instead of bouncing away from them, it goes right through them doing damage. And then it bounces around on the walls, essentially acting like an ice rink, if you will. But it's smart enough to bounce back towards other enemies and continuously doing damage as long as it's alive. I don't know the exact amount of seconds of how long it stays live off the top of my head, but it seems like it's out on the floor for quite a while. And if you're in a small area or like a level where there's a ton of walls on all sides and you shoot that special, it's going to go back and forth and do a devastating amount of damage, especially on boss characters. So yeah, I absolutely love Sweet Tooth Special in Small Brawl. The only real downside to it is if you're on a larger level that doesn't have any walls to bounce off of it, it kind of is useless. It still does a little bit of damage on that initial hit, but then it just gonna, it's going to glide away, and it, you'll never see it again, which is a bummer. So that's why it could have been higher on my list for its creativity and for its damage output, but sadly, because of larger areas in the game making it relatively useless, I have to lower it to 37 on my list. Number 36 is Warthog's Flamethrower from Twisted Metal Black and TM Lost. 
The flamethrower, I'm not a massive fan of, as you guys know, because it's just pretty generic. It's just a flamethrower. There's nothing cool about it. But I have to admit, they did get a little bit extra creative with this one in TM Black and Lost because it looks kind of like it's throwing like molten lava at people, if, if that makes sense. It doesn't look like a traditional fire flamethrower. It looks really cool. It, I will admit, though, it's a little bit more difficult to hit enemies with because it's a very thin stream of fire. But if you can actually get the entire special to land on somebody, it is devastating in terms of its damage output in Twisted Metal Black. And I really love its creativity of just the, the fact that it looks like molten lava. But obviously it has some downsides to it. It's really wiggly is the best way to describe it. If you see the gameplay, you know what I'm talking about. But once you're using it and if you move around, it just like wiggles and it doesn't stay in place. And it's very difficult to get the entire thing to land on somebody. And the freezing in Twisted Metal Black is so atrocious. Not only is it almost impossible just to land and freeze on somebody, but it doesn't last long enough to put a full special on somebody. So it's pretty rare when you get the entire special weapon of Warthog to land on somebody to do the most amount of damage. But that's why I do have to give it credit where credit is due. And that's why I think 36 is a fine placement. And at 35, we have Dark Tooth with the Chew from Twisted Metal head on. The Chew... <sighs> I think its biggest issue is it's not creative. It's literally just Mr. Slam special to look a little bit more demonic, I guess, if that makes sense. But it is very devastating in terms of damage. It does a lot of damage. It picks people up and it chucks them almost across the map. So you can cheese the hell out of the special weapon by just chucking people off ledges and doing damage with that on top of the damage the Crusher already does. So yeah, pretty self-explanatory. And that's why it's at 35. At number 34, we have Pizza Boy, my man, my main squeeze, the love of my life. Just kidding. But I do love Pizza Boy. He's amazing. And it's his Pizza Blades from Twisted Metal 4. Now I know this is this is biased. I 100% agree with you. I don't necessarily believe damage-wise or anything that this Pizza Blade special weapon should be this high on the list. I do think it should probably be around the 60s. But I could not justify myself putting it that low because of its creativity and i know again I, I am biased because pizza boy is my favorite character in the entire series let alone in just tm4 i love 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 the pizza blades man it's such a cool and unique concept i i love the fact that it's not just pizza blades that come out of the side of the vehicle and like you could drive up and grind a vehicle with with the pizza blades right that that would have been what anybody would have thought of but what they thought of is let's have two pizza blades fly out of the vehicle and soar through the air and then home in on the opponent and do explosive damage. Who the hell thinks of that, man? Like the creativity is just out the wazoo for that one. The, the, the elephant in the room is that it doesn't do much damage, if anything. It's very lackluster. It, it, it is a huge bummer. It's a huge shame. Thank God we have our Lord and Savior, Pedro, who's been making mods on TM4 and we've been able to experience what the Pizza Boy Pizza Blades are rightfully supposed to be by making them much stronger. But again, this whole list is based off the vanilla, the original games, and thus I am placing it at 34 just because I'm biased as hell and it's an amazing special, even if it's not very strong. And coming up at number 33, we have Roadkill with a Steel Javelin from Twisted Metal 1. This one might be a surprise. I think a lot of people kind of expect all the Twisted Metal 1 specials to be at the very bottom of the list because just none of them are very unique or, you know, they're more generic and just kind of blah. But again, I'm giving a little bit extra leeway because it is the first game in the series and they didn't really have anything to base it off of. And I got to admit, the Steel Javelin to me still sticks out as kind of a special in special weapons. Like, it's really cool. I, I like the idea of just a piece of scrap metal that shoots out of the front of the car that somehow can home in on characters in front of you. I, granted, it's not nearly as, you know, homing as Spectre Special or... For instance, like a homing missile or anything, but it, it does turn towards vehicles and it's pretty accurate. Not only that, it has a decent hitbox, so it's not very likely to miss, and it does a decent amount of damage. It's pretty medium to high damage, actually, compared to other special weapons in the game. So, all around, it's by far one of my favorite characters to choose in Twist Metal 1 strictly for his special alone. But if I was to give it some knockbacks or reasons why it's not higher on the list is, well... It could do more damage. I mean, it, like I said, it does decent damage. It's not the most damage hungry special in the entire game. And it's creativity as well. Like, I know I gave it some praises for a piece of scrap metal that shoots out and actually homes in characters, making it more mystical or unique than just a regular piece of scrap metal that's a skill shot. But it's still just a little tiny gray blob. 
uh, or spike, I should say. It's it's nothing that's really eye catching or super creative or anything like that. And it doesn't really explode on impact. It just kind of hits the vehicle and makes them jump up a little bit from the ground and it does damage. So if it did something just a little bit extra flair to it, I think it would be higher on my list. But in terms of Toolsmith 1 special weapons, I think it's pretty high up there. And I think 33 is a fine place for it. And number 32, we're looking at Thumper with the Mega Fire, aka the Flamethrower from Twist Metal 1, 2, 4, and Head On. I know some of these are much different than others. I know like in TM4, Thumper is technically a boss character and the Flamethrower is absolutely broken. But let's be honest, the Flamethrower in TM1 and 2 is also insanely broken. So it kind of makes it feel like he was a boss to begin with. And I don't know what they, the hell they were thinking in Head On. Thumper is totally busted in the worst way possible, just being useless. I absolutely hate their flamethrower special and TM head on, but I'm still going to rank them at the same spot altogether just because they're all the same concept and they're all decent in their own ways. So the flamethrower would be higher on my list. I will admit because I love Thumper. I love the character, but as for a special weapon, it would be higher on my list if it just wasn't a generic flamethrower. If there was something extra, just something a little different to make it unique or mystical or something to make it stick out and there's it's just not there the only thing that makes it stick out is just how busted it was in the first two games where it literally felt like you could one tap anybody as long as you froze them before you shot them so yeah it is what it is it's still very powerful it's a strong attack it's just not very creative so 32 it is and then coming at 31 we have sweet tooth's sweet missiles which was about black and lost so essentially, these are just after you turn into the giant mech in Twistmile Black, you then shoot out, I think it's like 18 of these missiles that essentially are just fire missiles. There's nothing creative or crazy different about them. However, in the game, for the first time seeing this as a spectacle, transforming into that mech and then shooting that many missiles in succession, it is jaw dropping. It, it is awesome. And if you are able to hit every single missile, it does a relatively decent amount of damage when you're looking at other special weapons in the game. So the Sweet Missiles is one of my favorite specials in the entire game of Twisted Metal Black, and that's why it is relatively high on my list. However, I am docking a couple points because the actual spectacle of it, the creativity of it, mostly just comes from the mech itself, not necessarily what the special weapon is, because it's really just a mix of fire missiles. There's nothing too crazy there. And on top of that, you do have to be pretty accurate and be lucky to be able to get every single missile to hit a character in front of you. With the high speed of TM Black and how fast characters move around, it's very difficult to do that. So with those two negatives, that brings it down a couple notches, but I'm still putting it at 31. And coming down to 30, we're at Mr. Zombie with his Super Beast special in TM4. This is another character that has a special place in my heart because, man, it's Rob Zombie. We have an actual actor, an actual human being icon in the Twisted Metal universe that we can play as. It's crazy. It's awesome. And not only that, but he's really fucking good. He's a good character. Mr. Zombie might not be the fastest or the most best controlling character in the entire series, but his special weapon is by far the best reason to choose him in any shape or form. It's a literal floating skull that's on fire. It electrifies enemies to suck them into it, and then it explodes after it's done, leaving the enemy on fire. Can you get any more badass than that? So it's kind of just like the better version of Orbital, in my opinion. No, it doesn't freeze the enemy once it's done, but it still pulls them in and gets them into one proximity where you can unload a barrage of missiles on them in a combo while they're being electrocuted and then on fire and exploded by the skull once it's done. Yeah, it's devastating. And for a regular character, a non-boss battle character in Twist Metal 4, it's one of the best specials in the game, bar none. If I was to give any downsides to it, it'd probably be just its range is very weak and it doesn't last very long. So if it lasted a little bit longer to, to electrify the enemy a little bit longer, do a little bit more damage, and also, of course, if it gave you a little bit more range where it shot out, I think this would easily be like a top 15, top 20 for me. But because of those little tiny setbacks, I am going to put it at a number 30. And at number 29, we have Manslaughter with the Boulder Throw from Twist Metal Black and Twisted Metal Lost. Now, the Boulder Throw with Manslaughter, it actually has two different specials in one. So the one version of special, you can actually throw the rocks behind you and leave them on the ground. And if somebody runs into them, it's pretty devastating. 
or you can just straight up chuck them at people in front of you, which it's always hilarious because some characters will literally go flying from the impact of the boulders. And not only that, but if you can get a lot of the boulders to hit somebody specifically, it can do a devastating amount of damage. I was actually blown away. My jaw was on the floor the other day when I was recording this footage and seeing people's health just plummet when I was getting direct hits with the boulders. Because overall, I'm not a huge fan of Manslaughter as a character playing them as them. I'm just not a fan of the big sluggish characters like that. So coming back to this character that I'd never really played growing up, I was actually kind of astonished at how fun they are to play as because of how good their special is. If I was to give any critiques, it's a little bit difficult to get multiple rocks to hit somebody to do the ultimate amount of damage when you chuck them out at somebody. And on top of that, if you want to lay them behind you, you just have to get lucky that the, the enemy is going to run into them. And in TM Black, they're pretty smart in my experience where I had them chasing me. I purposely was looking behind me. I would drop the rocks and then they would stop right in front of them and just sit there. And I'm just like, come on, man. Like, what the hell? So those are like my only critiques with the special weapon, because otherwise it's, it's a pretty strong and devastating weapon for a regular non boss character. So that's why I think it's totally fair to put it at 29. Number 28 is Moon Buggy. I never know how to say the word of this. I'm going to go with Kaisers. I think, uh, I don't know. I, I did my best from Twisted Metal 4. Moon Buggy is by far probably the most unique looking character in the entire game. They look like they're straight out of an alien movie uh, or like a giant centipede bug. I have no idea. I guess it makes sense with Buggy in the name, but either way, they have one of the coolest specials in the game. They're these three light balls that essentially just electrify the enemy, but they also pick them up and chuck them. And it's amazing and hilarious every single time. It doesn't necessarily do the most amount of damage compared to other specials in the game, especially from boss characters. But I just absolutely love the spectacle and the creativity of the three Kaisers that just pick up enemies and chuck them across the map uh, or just keep them in the air and you can do combos on them or whatever. It's just very fun and it's also extremely intimidating to go against if you're the player going against the boss so that's why i feel moon buggy is definitely at a 28. at number 27 we have thumper again with their sonic blast specials from tm3 and tm small brawl now i know a lot of you guys are probably wondering what the hell you're putting the sonic blast the the base boost special up and above the flamethrower and yes 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 i am in terms of straight up damage You'd have to be stupid, of course, to not put the flamethrower in front of the Sonic Blast. I, I totally agree with that. But my criteria is not just damage alone. It's how much fun is it to use and how much wow factor it is and how much creativity is also involved. There's a couple criteria here that the Sonic Blast just totally envelops the flamethrowers. And yes, damage wise, not nearly as strong, but definitely not weak. In both TM3 and Small Brawl, these are both very strong specials if you know how to use them correctly. Not only that, but I just think the, the factor that the name is Thumper makes more sense that it involves something to do with music or bass, you know, sending sound waves to somebody to do damage. It's, it's a badass way to look at it and it makes the most sense and it's very creative. So I have to hand them an applause for that. And I also like that in both Small Brawl and TM3, they're both different versions of said bass boost sound effects or bass boost special effect. In TM3, it's just these little waves that send people flying if they're in front of you, which is hilarious every single time, and also does a lot of damage if you get every single one to hit somebody before they go flying. While in Small Brawl, you shoot out three separate, almost looks like discs, that bounce off the walls and can do double damage if they come back and hit the enemy again. Not only that, but there's actually an exploit in the game right now, which I'm not going to add towards my point ranking system, I just wanted to bring this up, that if you hit a boss, in the side like if you t-bone the boss with your special it actually can hook into them and drag them across the floor doing exponential amount of damage which is always hilarious and really cool but yeah just in general i think the creativity alone sets this one apart and that's why i think the sonic blast for thumper deserves its 27th spot and moving on to number 26 we have outlaw with the gun turret special in twist metal black lost and 2012. The gun turret special, I was never a huge fan of growing up. I always was like, why the hell did you get rid of the taser that we've all come to know and love with Outlaw? It makes no sense. But as an adult, even though I still don't necessarily like it as much as the taser, I can still understand why they did this change. It just makes more sense for a military SWAT vehicle like they were going for in Twisted Metal Black to have a turret gun or some giant gun on top of the vehicle to shoot at the enemies. 
And I do like the idea that you don't necessarily have to aim with it either. It just kind of aims for you, whoever's near you. And it's pretty accurate for the most part, especially in 2012. And both in black and in 2012, if you keep hitting the fire button as you're using the special, it'll shoot out little missiles that could do extra damage. Now in 2012, they did this above and beyond by going way overboard with the missiles, doing exceptional amount of damage, but all around, it's still the same concepts. So that's why I'm putting these both together in the same spot. And it's still really cool. It's an accurate special. It does a decent amount of damage and it looks pretty cool. But the reason it's not any higher on this list is just because I don't think it's that creative. It's just a dude on top of your car with a gun. There's nothing super crazy about it. I, I feel that the taser is more creative. It makes more sense. It's more magical, mystical, whatever you want to call it. It's more eye popping. So that's the main reason this is not higher on the list, even though it is a really decent special weapon and it's really easy to use. You literally just click the button and you let it do its thing and you get some damage. So yeah, Outlaw Gun Turret is at 26. And at 25, we're coming to Mr. Slam with the Grab and Slam special from TM2, 4, Small Brawl, and Head On. Mr. Slam, he's iconic, man. It, it makes sense why he's so high up on this list. It's a really cool concept of a giant front loader construction vehicle with a scoop that can grab people and it's got teeth on it. It's just everything about Mr. Slam is very iconic. It makes sense why he's as popular and loved as much as he is. But I want to say that there's a reason why his special isn't higher than 25. The main reason I think is the skill gap. It is pretty damn difficult to get him to actually hit on command with most games. A, a TM2 especially is pretty difficult to get a hit on somebody without freezing them first. And that's the whole reason why the AI likes to freeze like crazy. And there's the whole iconic Mr. Slam freezing thing. But needless to say, in any game that you play as Mr. Slam, you do have to have that hand-eye coordination in order to use your special at the right time to essentially grab the opponent and slam them to the ground. Not only that, it doesn't do a whole lot of damage. Like it, don't get me wrong, compared to most characters in every one of these games, it is a stronger special in terms of its damage output. But there is definitely stronger specials in said games. And that's why I just think Mr. Slam special is very iconic. It's really creative. I love it, but it's just a little bit too difficult to use for most people. And it doesn't do the most amount of damage as it honestly could have. So that's why I think Mr. Slam's grab and slam is totally fine to be at 25. And at number 24, talk about iconic special weapons. We have Outlaw's Omni Taser from Twisted Metal 1, 2, 3, Small Brawl, and Head On. I totally understand some people are going to be angry that I'm not separating Small Brawl's Omni Taser, but just hear me out on this one. They're all the exact same special weapon in some shape or form. They essentially involve a electric taser that comes from the vehicle and in close proximity to an enemy. With the taser, you can only attach to one vehicle in TM's 1, 2, small brawl and head on. And then in TM3, they just said, screw it, let's let you attack everybody at once with one special, which was insanely cool. And not only that, but it kind of turned into like a crowd control type of special weapon where every time you hit somebody with it, they would be like leaped up into the air. You can get them out of your face and all the above. And it's just a very fun, tactical, easy to use special weapon. And it looks super badass. So it's very creative. I also liked in like TM2 where you could rub to somebody, connect the taser and then run away and it would stay connected no matter how much distance away you went from the, the enemy. You could also do that in TM1 as well. It just wasn't nearly as strong. So it didn't feel like it was as good of a special, but it just feels like all these specials, even though they do feel relatively different from game to game, they all have the same attributes, they all have the same feeling and creativity. And lastly, with Small Brawl, I know a lot of people love Small Brawl's Outlaw. I know that the speedrunners use him like crazy because his special is honestly busted, where if you tap the fire button as fast as you can, you'll drain health from the enemy as well as give the health to the character. And yes, that's obviously a huge benefit to the special weapon and makes it very strong. And if anything, it's what moved all of these up the list even further. I was actually going to put Outlaw Omni Taser around the 28, 29 mark, but I did end up moving it up the rankings because of the Small Brawl version alone. So it is what it is. It's a very iconic special. It's one of my favorites in the entire series. If I was to give any critiques to the Omni Taser, I would probably say it just doesn't do as much damage as it possibly could. I think TM2 did it the best. Uh, with how much damage it does to the opponents. And I think TM3 had the best overall version with being able to connect to as many opponents that are around you. It does crowd control by sending them in the air. It just wasn't very strong in terms of its damage output. So if 
these specials did what TM3 did, but just did more damage to the enemy, I think this would probably be my favorite special in the entire series, bar none. But for what it is and what we got in all of these games, I think the Omni Taser is at a rightful good spot at 24. And at 23, pretty close to Outlaw, we have Meter Maid with the Energy Ray from TM4. Now, these could be interchanged. I'm not saying definitively that Meter Maid is better than all the other Outlaws. I'm not saying that. But in terms of just her special, the Energy Ray, it's basically the Twisted Metal Small Brawls version without having to rapidly tap the fire button. You just shoot the special. It electrifies multiple, by the way, just like TM3, multiple enemies. It also does a little bit of crowd control by sending some of them into the air sometimes. And then it also drains the energy and gives it to the character. And it's a relatively good drain as well. Like just as much damage as it's doing to the enemy is how much health it's giving back to Meter Maid. So that's why I truly do personally feel the Energy Ray is a better special weapon than the Omni Taser. But again, you could interchange these. I, I wouldn't be mad at you if you thought otherwise, but I do feel Meter Maid's energy rate is slightly better for that alone, where you don't have to use that multi-tap ability of the fire button to drain the enemy like you do in Small Brawl. You just have to hit the button and let it do its thing. And that's why Meter Maid is rightfully at number 23. And at 22, we have Twister's Tornado Spin from Twisted Metal Head On. With this special weapon, it 1000% is in this high of a spot for its design alone. It's absolutely breathtaking every single time I use this special weapon. It's gorgeous, it feels great, and this is 100% you can tell what they wanted to do with Twister from the get-go. It's just they didn't have the technology to do it. But with the power of the PS2 and the PSP, they were able to finally bring it to fruition and it looks amazing. If I was to give it some setbacks, I just wish it lasted a little bit longer and I also wish that it did a little bit more damage or at least did more damage when it threw the characters out of the tornado. But again, the creativity and the overall design of the tornado spin from head on is breathtaking. It's by far my favorite version in terms of its looks for Twister. And that's why I think it's a fair spot at number 22. At number 21 is Roadkill with his charged missiles in Twist Metal Black and Twist Metal Lost. The charged missile special is nothing special or <laughs> to write home about in terms of its design or its creativity if i'm being honest with you but there is a little bit of skill involved with holding down the button long enough to let go at the perfect amount of time to get the ultimate amount of damage with blood missiles into a metal black if you get that perfect timed release of the special weapon to turn red the amount of damage it does is just insane compared to every other regular character in black it almost feels like it's broken if they like they didn't have enough testing or something and they made the damage way too high. And the main way you can actually experience this is by going against Roadkill in any of the game modes. Whenever I see Roadkill as an enemy, I have to kill him immediately because for some reason the AI always gets that perfect timed release on his special weapon to do massive amounts of damage to you and he can basically kill you in like two hits. It's actually insane. So Playing as Roadkill, thankfully, it's the exact same for you. If you have good enough timing, you can do it almost every single time. And it is devastating. It is awesome. It's a lot of fun to play as. Absolutely love it. Again, the only major downside to it is just it's not very creative. It's just a bunch of fire missiles, just like Sweet Tooth Special. So that's why I think ranking it at 21 is very fair. And coming down to the top 20, we got Shadow with the Reticle Coffin and TM2012. Shadow was a little bit different this time around in the newest game in the series, and I like what they did with the creativity of this special weapon. I absolutely love that it's actually a live human rattling around in a coffin on top of your vehicle with tape over his mouth, trying to yell and scream, and he can't do anything about it, and you launch him at an enemy and explode. It's absolutely awesome. Now, with the reticle coffin in 2012, you can do two different things. You can lob it at the enemy to get a direct hit, or you can leave it on the ground and explode it at will whenever you want from any distance, and it'll kind of create a shockwave effect on the ground, damaging enemies that way. But obviously, it'll be a little bit less damage that way, but it's good for crowd control. But it's a lot of fun to be able to aim it correctly to shoot it, and it does a decent amount of damage. But I think the main reason I put this so high on the list is just because of how absolutely bonkers the actual creativity is of throwing a coffin at somebody with a person inside of it. And I also love that apparently it was modeled after Ryan Reynolds, the actor, 
who's one of my favorite actors so pretty awesome you get to throw deadpool at people so there is that but all in all i think it's a pretty decent special i just wish it did a little bit more damage and it was a little bit more accurate for newer players so with that shadow reticle coffin is going to be at 20. and coming down to number 19 we have gold tooth with the sweet bot plus sweet missile special in twisted metal lost no i did not forget about the lost characters i know i know i know some people are very defensive of their lost their precious baby characters and I, I get it i get it some of them are pretty cool but gold tooth to me is a joke it's straight up just like what the hell were they thinking i don't understand who this character is it's really kind of cringe if i'm being honest with you but you can't deny the special weapon is absolutely bonkers busted it's literally the sweet missiles from twist my black it's just upgraded tenfold they don't look nearly as good it, it's really weird it, they, they kind of look invisible almost but they're like a gold mist but they do an insane amount of damage. Like you can pretty much one tap smaller characters like Mr. Grimm. It's absolutely bonkers. A lot of fun, clearly. It's the same thing. Everything I said about Twist Metal Black's Sweet Tooth special, just with better damage. So that's why Gold Tooth is at number 19. And at number 18, Shadow returns once again with the Soul Shadow from TM2, TM Black, Small Brawl, Head On, Lost, and 2012. It's a mouthful it's a lot of games but yes the soul shadow is the tried and true the special we all come to know and love when it comes to shadow aka mortimer or raven whatever game you're playing and i love this special man it's a lot of fun it's a skill shot technically but it can go through walls and it can go over ledges and all the above so it's fun because it shoots out really quickly you can also do rear attacks with it you can detonate it on demand to get more damage if it's right underneath the character or you can do splash damage by hitting multiple people at once and it does a decent amount of damage in almost every single game that it's popped up in so it's very iconic i think it's a very fun easy to pick up special a lot of people really gravitate towards shadow for a reason and i think the special weapon is probably one of the biggest reasons for that if I was to give it any critiques, I think the biggest thing is that if you don't get a direct hit with it, or if you're just not fast enough with your reflexes, not getting a direct hit is going to hinder the damage pretty heavily to where it almost feels useless sometimes. But again, if you get enough people over that shadow and you get a, a direct hit with multiple people, you can do some great blast damage to make up for it. But all in all, I think it could be better in terms of its accuracy, or maybe they could have even made it home in a little bit on the enemy or something like that to make it a little bit easier for newcomers to the series but all around it's still a very good special and that's why i think it's fine ranked at number 18. coming at number 17 we have primeval's headhunter special from tm3 primeval is another character just like dark side that you have to use a game shark in order to play as them but thankfully it's pretty easy to do and once you do they, they play great and primeval special is no joke in tm3 they, they are insanely overpowered it's got one of the best tracking, I think, in the entire game for specials in terms of its homing capabilities. It's got insane damage, insane knockback. It sends people just flying out of the game. It is by far the definition of broken in terms of TM3 specials. So, yeah, it's, it's my favorite version of said special. If I was to give it any critiques, it'd probably just be the creativity on this one. I think it's very easy to pick up and play for newcomers, especially if you can get them working with the Game Shark and all that. But yeah, it's just not that creative. It's just a floating skull with some spikes that follow it around. Nothing too crazy, nothing too cool. And it kind of works all like minion special in terms of its homing capabilities and what it looks like. So yeah, that's the only reason it's not higher on the list, but it's very broken. It's very fun. So yeah, Primeval Headhunter is at 17. And number 16, we have Warthog's Patriot Missiles from TM1, 2, 3, Small Brawl, and Head On. These ones are just iconic, man. I mean, are they creative? Not really. It's three random missiles with different colors of red, white, and blue to show its patriotism because it is a tank from the army, but is by far, I would have to say, the easiest special to pick up and use. I think as a kid, Warthog was the one I went to most growing up because it's just simple. Three little missiles that shoot out in front of you and they're really accurate. They almost hit the character every single time as long as you don't have an object in front of you. On top of that, they've always done decent damage. I don't think any of the games give you really weak damage with the Warthog Special. Maybe TM3s is probably the weakest one. But all around, the Patriot Missiles from Warthog are just super iconic, very easy to pick up and use. I don't really have many complaints with them other than just they're not very creative. It's just three random missiles. So I think number 16 is a fair place for Warthog Special. 
All right, in the top 15 is going to be Crazy 8 with the Electrical Surge from Twisted Metal Black. Yes, yes, yes. I totally believe the Electrical Surge from Crazy 8 is the best version of the Taser from Outlaw. As a kid, I used to think that Crazy 8 was basically just the new Outlaw, and I totally forgot that Outlaw was even in the game, just because of how fun Crazy 8 is to play in Twisted Metal Black. Obviously, Outlaw is in the game. They just gave him the other special, which I'm not a huge fan of. So getting to use an Electrical Surge special weapon like this on a character in Twisted Metal Black was such a treat. And I think he is by far the best version of Outlaw, even though he's not technically Outlaw. The reason for this is not just because, oh, you click a button and it electrifies enemies around you like any other Outlaw. No, this does involve some type of skill to learn and to understand. So I will admit, I understand if you're a first time player of this character, you might not like him, or if you just don't want to dive into it and understand how to use it properly, you're not going to like him either. And that's why some other people, I'm not going to name names, have ranked him pretty low on their rankings for this. And I get it. I understand it. But I'm here to say that the main reason why I think he is really high up on my list is the fact that if you triple tap the directional pad in the direction of the enemy around you, so if they're in front of you, for instance, you triple tap the up button on your directional pad, you will get a purple electrical field in front of your car indicating you did it correctly. And thus, if you start tapping your fire button repeatedly, you will do quadruple the amount of damage as it would just normally hitting the button once and letting electrocute people. It's absolutely devastating if you stay in range of the person and you can do the full electric special on them. I'm not even joking. I think I have one tap killed Brimestone, Mr. Grimm, and Spectre at least once in my life as Crazy 8. It's actually insane how powerful this special weapon is if you can use it correctly. The only reason I'm putting him at 15 and I'm not putting him higher because I truly believe he deserves to be higher on this list. I am putting him at 15 to be fair because of my criteria of ease of use. I don't think it's that easy. You have to figure this out on your own. You have to learn it. You have to understand it. There's a huge skill gap. So that is honestly the only downside to his special weapon, and that's why he is at 15. At number 14, we have Calypso's nuke in TM4. Honestly, this is at 14 mainly because it's a goddamn nuke. I, <laughs> can you get any more badass and creative in a special weapon? I, I don't think so. It's a literal nuke, man. No, it doesn't nuke the entire level or blow up the game or end the level or anything like that, but it, it feels powerful when you're in-game using it. It sounds amazing the sound design is great it does a decent amount of damage i honestly wish it did a little bit more damage than it does and i wish it was a little bit more accurate it it does technically curve a little bit towards the enemy in front of you but it's very minute i wish it was a little bit more homing in its capabilities but yeah otherwise the nuke is amazing i absolutely love it and that's why it's at 14 on my list and at number 13, we have Axel's Crowd Controller, aka the Shockwave from TM2, TM3, 4, Black, 2012, and Head On. This is the iconic Shockwave special weapon that we've all come to know and love of Axel. Yes, the Axel Power. And this thing is crazy. Uh, it's very good. It's very, it comes in handy all the time for crowd control. I mean, it's literally called the Crowd Controller. It makes sense. So if you're surrounded by a ton of enemies, you shoot it once, everybody goes flying, everybody takes damage. It's very useful. But there is some downsides to it and why it's not higher up on my list. The main reason is it doesn't have much range. So if you're far away from an enemy, it's literally useless. It can't do anything for you. Also, if it's just a 1v1 situation, it doesn't do all that much damage. Like, yes, you can send someone flying or push them out of your way, I guess. But if you're just trying to do damage to somebody, it's not all that great. It's just okay. I wish it did more damage. I mean, if the Shockwave did more damage in any of these games, I think it would be higher on my list. I really do. But the fact that it doesn't, and it's mainly just good for crowd control, for sending people into the air if you're surrounded or overwhelmed by too many people, that's the, really the only thing that's good about it. And of course, it's iconic what the Axel Power saying. And because Axel just looks badass, the character himself is awesome. But if we're just looking objectively at the special weapon, I think number 13 is a fair place for the Shockwave. And at number 12, we have Spectre's Ghost Missile from TM1, TM2, TM3, Black, Small Brawl, Head-On, and Lost. 
Now, trust me, guys, this pains me to not put it higher on the list. I understand if people disagree with me on this one by putting it so low. And even though 12 really isn't that low, but you know what I mean. I want to put this higher, but I'm looking at all these objectively, and I think my list will make more sense as we go on as to why this is at number 12. The Ghost Missile is just insanely iconic. It was from the very first game. You shoot it out, and as long as somebody is in your proximity, it will do whatever it can to hit that opponent. It'll go through walls, go through the floor, it'll go super fast, it'll just fly around going crazy until it finally hits the enemy. It's always been iconic to me, it's always been fun to use, and ever since the first time I played this character, I was blown away by its creativity and how that missile worked. Just so badass. Now, what is the major downside to Spectre's missile? Of course, it's its damage. It doesn't do all that much damage at all, really. It does about the same, I'd say, in most games as like a power missile, maybe a little less than that even, except for Twisted Metal Black. It is absolutely busted in Twisted Metal Black. The only thing that they tried to make it a little bit more fair to the player is it's a little slow, so you can hear it coming from a mile away and you can use a shield or you can try to run away from it, I suppose, and you are able to do that. And that's, I could be wrong, but I think that's the only game in the series you can outrun the special. That being said, every other game, it's super quick. It's just not very strong. So if it had more damage, I think if it did more damage output and it was actually broken, it would be much higher on this list. But because of my criteria, I'm going to have to leave it at number 12. And coming at number 11, we have Dark Sides, Dark Side Slam from Twisted Metal, Small Brawl. Now you may have noticed when I was talking about the Dark Side Slam from earlier, I didn't mention Small Brawl. And that's because I feel, even though this is the exact same special as Twisted Metal Black, where it honks a horn, you get a speed boost, and you run into people, this one is so much better than the other ones that it had to be on the list in its own spot. And it's so broken in terms of the other specials in Small Brawl that it's it has to be at number 11. It's very strong to the point of you can literally ram one person and take out half of their health if they're a small enough character like Mime or Mr. Grimm or Spectre. But it also lasts long enough to where you can hit one person multiple times if you turn around fast enough. And thus, you can literally one-tap some characters. I've one-tapped Crimson Fury before, Warthog before. As long as you're just smart enough to turn around fast enough to keep, get multiple hits with one special, you have that ability to do so. It's absolutely insane how busted this special weapon is. If I was to give it any critiques, I would probably just say that the creativity is, again, it's kind of meh. It's just you honk a horn, you get a speed boost, and you can run into people. I do like the, the detail of like the little blue shield on front of the car that kind of indicates your special is on and active, which, get, again, gives it a leg up over the other ones, but still not enough to me to where I can put it higher on this list, so that's why it's at number 11. Alrighty, coming down to the wire, guys. Number 10, Mr. Grimm, Screaming Soul. From Twisted Metal 1, 2, 3, Black, Small Brawl, Head On, and Lost. Yes, it is the very iconic, and I know I'm using that word a lot, but it's the only way to describe it, glass cannon special weapon that we've come to know and love ever since the very first Twisted Metal. It's the skill shot, straight arrow, power missile, if you will, extremely damaging special weapon of Mr. Grimm. I think the biggest thing that makes this special so iconic is not just because it's a skill shot and does a lot of damage, but because it's coming from a character that essentially has always been known as the weakest in every game in terms of his armor. He's on a motorcycle, so it makes sense why he'd be really weak. So it also makes sense why he'd be given one of the best, if not the best, special weapon in every game. Obviously, he hasn't been given the best special weapon in every game, sadly. TM3, I'm looking at you. But that being said, he's still really good in almost every single one, and that's why I feel like I'm put, I am want to put them on the same list at number 10, just to be fair. The only reason he's not higher on the list is honestly because of the skill difference. I mean, it's a skill shot, it's a straight and true, but you have to be good with your aim in order to use it effectively, and you kind of have to be good with the game in order to use a character with such weak armor, otherwise you're going to die immediately. So... My criteria, one of them was ease of use, and that's one of the ones where he completely fails at because it is kind of difficult to use it. So that's why I do think it is fair for me to put him at number 10, even though personally, I would love to put him higher on this list, but it is what it is. So coming to number 9, we have Minions, Flamethrower, and Fireballs from Twisted Metal Black. 
Minion in TM Black is an extremely overpowered boss. He's very difficult to go against for newcomers, and he has a shield, which makes him just stupid. But once you get the shield to go away, he's still a bitch. He's still very strong, got a lot of armor, and his special weapon is insane. It will literally melt you like it's supposed to. It's a flamethrower. Think of Warthog's flamethrower special weapon, just automatic. You don't have to aim it. It literally will just shoot at anybody who's around you and also throw fireballs to get you from a distance that home in on the opponent. So yeah, that's why Minion's flamethrower and fireballs is so much higher on this list because even when you unlock him and play as him as a character, his special is still just as strong. I kid you not, if you can sit in one spot and have somebody around you for a long enough time, you can pretty much one tap everybody who has like a medium to low armor. <laughs> it's that strong. If I was to give it any complaints, I would just say that creativity is where it falls flat. It's very easy to use. That's not the problem at all here, but it's just a flamethrower and it's the exact same thing that Warthog has, but just as a turret on top of the vehicle that does everything for you. So yeah. Otherwise, everything else is amazing, and that's why it's at number nine. And moving on to number eight, Club Kid Vortex in TM3. Now, this one I know, I know I'm going to get hate for this one. People are going to be like, you're putting a Twisted Metal 3 character that's only in TM3. He's never made an appearance back in the top 10. Wow, I'm disliking this video. I'm out of here. This guy's an idiot. He doesn't know what I'm talking about. All right. All right, big guy. Let, let, me, let me explain myself with this one, all right? The Vortex from Club Kid is literally the better version of Twister's special in TM2. What I mean by that, Twister, as you know, she turns into a tornado, she sucks everybody into her tornado and she does damage and sends them flying. Club Kid does his exact same thing. However, he doesn't run the risk of having anybody do damage to him as they're in his special. He throws it out behind him like a whirlpool. Everybody gets sucked into it from behind. It's, and it's also incredibly strong. It's definitely overpowered. And I've gone over this in a full video. So you get the damage from everybody running into each other while they're being spun around in his whirlpool. Not only that, now they're all stuck in one spot and you can drive around willingly. You can run up to them and start throwing bombs on them. You can freeze them. You can do whatever you want to people while they're in your tornado doing extra damage that way. And then not only that, instead of just sending people flying, it explodes doing explosive damage. I can't tell you how many times I've played as Club Kid and I've gotten triple, quadruple. I think I even got a pentakill one time way back in the day on the blimp. Absolutely insane how strong his special can be. And you can even use it to cheese people. Like you can use him to cheese Primeval at the very end by putting a tornado in the hole and Primeval will get sucked down into it and die immediately. Like he is by far the most broken character in the game and in the entire series, if I'm being honest with you. If I was to give any critique to his special weapon, it's just that if you only get one person or maybe you only two people in his special, it's not very strong. It really relies on multiple people running into each other to do the most amount of damage. And of course, you throwing weapons at it. But the explosion itself really isn't that strong. It maybe takes like five, maybe nah, I'd say about 5% of their health. It's really low. So it's all about doing that damage from multiple people at once. But my God, if you get that, you're going to have a fun time. And that's why I think Club Kid deserves his number eight spot. And at number seven, we have Twister's Tornado Spin from Twisted Metal Small Brawl. Yes, this is separated from the other Twister's Tornadoes. And I think it's definitely worthy of its spot at number seven, because in Small Brawl, Twister's special doesn't necessarily make you lose control of your vehicle or change the control at all because it just appears on top of her car. Yes, artistically and creatively, it doesn't look as good as head-ons, of course, but I think with the limitations of the PS1, I think they did the best they could, and it the fact that it doesn't hinder the gameplay, it makes it so much better. So not only that, but you can pick up every single character who's on the level at once doing damage while they're spinning, as well as it throws them against the wall doing extra damage then. And on top of that, you can, of course, use it to throw people off the ledge to do insta kills like on the treetop rumble level. And not only that, but nobody can do damage to you while they're in your special unless they drop mines on your head, which literally never happens because AI. So, yeah, in my opinion, Twister and Small Brawl is one of the best characters in the entire series, let alone in the entire game, of course. And I also find it really funny that there's no limit to how big people can be to be in her tornado. Like you can still suck up the bosses as well, which is always hilarious to see. So yeah, Twister is absolutely goaded in Small Brawl. 
if I was to give it one critique and the reason why it's not my number one, it's probably that it just doesn't do enough damage depending on how many vehicles are in the tornado. I wish it worked like club kids where the more characters that were in it, the more damage it would do to them. Obviously it would be even more broken than it already is, but that's probably my only critique that I have for it and why it definitely deserves a number seven spot. And at number six, we have Reaper with the chainsaw from TM 2012. If you guys remember at the very beginning of this list, the RPG from Reaper was one of the weakest or worst specials in the entire series, which is very ironic because their main special, in my opinion, is in the top six. If you were to lean back, do a wheelie, and grind the chainsaw on the ground, getting it on fire, and you get a direct hit with it, you can do up to 150 damage on a single hit, which literally can one-tap kill Kamikaze. It's actually broken. Even in my gameplay here, you'll see that I actually ended up getting a one-tap kill with the special weapon on, on Warthog because I hit him directly in that little glowing disc underneath his body. So it just goes to show that this special weapon is probably the best version of Mr. Grimm's special in the entire series. It's just a shame that it's technically not Mr. Grimm. It's called Reaper for some dumbass reason. So yeah, the chainsaw is broken AF. But the only reason it's not higher on the list is, like I said, for Mr. Grimm's special, it, it's a skill shot. It's very difficult to get direct hits with this, so it's not a pick up and play, easy to play special. It does take some skill, it does take some use to get used to, and you have to figure out that you have to grind the chainsaw to do extra damage. But yeah, the fact that it's as broken as it is, and you can pretty much go through the entire game just using this one special, it, yeah, it deserves its number six spot. And coming to our top five, we have Minion with any special weapon from Twisted Metal 1. Yep, we have the iconic Mr. Minion, and he literally can use any special from Twisted Metal 1. This one should be pretty self-explanatory because it's using any special in the game. It's pick and choose, right? But like I stated before, Twisted Metal 1 isn't the best game in the series in terms of special weapons and neither one in that game I would choose as my top favorite in the entire series. So that's why he's not higher on the list. But yeah, he can literally pick and choose anyone he wants, and he's only playable through a Game Shark code, which is kind of a bummer, but again, he is playable, so that's why he's on this list. And he's absolutely a bitch to go against. So it totally makes sense why he would be so high on it with his use of any of the specials in the entire game. And you're gonna sense the theme here for the next two, at number four, we have Mime with the Mime special from Twisted Metal Small Brawl. So Mime is not a very strong character, kind of like Mr. Grimm, but if you look at her special weapon, she can use anybody's special that's in the match with you. So anybody that she's looking at currently, if you switch to your special weapon, it will take theirs and you can use it against them. It does the same amount of damage as the character it's supposed to be coming from, and sometimes it looks absolutely hilarious. For instance, if you use like Hammerhead special with Mime, her wheels will separate and it shall actually jump on top of the vehicle and grind them down just like Hammerhead does. And it's awesome. That's why Mime, I think, deserves the number four spot. And then number three is Piecemeal from Twist Metal Small Brawl. Again, can use any special, however, not just from people in the match. They can use any special from anybody in the entire game. The only thing that's really weird about this one though is for some reason, whenever you use a special it doesn't stay or use the same one over again it actually switches every single time whereas with mime as long as you don't switch out your specials like if you have multiple stacked up you can use that same special over and over and over again until you're out of specials so for some reason peace pills not the same not sure why that is but yeah the reason i'm putting him above mime and minion from tm1 is because i personally feel the specials in small brawl are better overall than the ones in tm1 so you have more to choose from. And on top of that, you can choose from any special in the entire game, not necessarily just who's ever in the match with you, which I think is really cool. Now you're probably wondering in my top two, who the hell could be better than being able to choose any special in the entire game? I get to be honest, my number two pick is, it is biased. I'm, I'm not gonna lie, I'm pretty, I'm pretty biased, but uh, I think some of you guys will agree with me on this one. It's Minions Serpent Attack from TM2 and 3 together. Why am I putting Minion Serpent at number two, you all may be asking? It's literally just Warthog special with a freeze. And yeah, I, I know, I, I get that, I, I agree. But it's not only that, It's it does way more damage than Warthog special. It also freezes people, so it makes them stuck in place once you've shot them once. And you're also playing a boss that just makes you feel overpowered and broken to begin with. 
So yeah, Minion Serpent is just iconic for me. I've always loved this special weapon. It's always scared the hell out of me as a kid growing up. Whenever he came out of lava in TM2 and he shot me with that serpent for the first time, I may have peed myself a little bit and I think it's rightfully justified. So yeah, in my opinion, I think the Minion Serpent is one of the best specials in the entire series. And I think it deserves a number two spot. So with all that being said, what is the one special that we have not talked about in this entire list? Who have we forgotten? Who could be number one? I know a lot of you are probably already knowing who it is. I know some of you are probably commenting already before I'm even saying it. And you knew from the beginning what it was going to be. And you're right. It is Sweet Tooth Henchman from Twisted Metal 4. Oh, I know, I know. Oh my god, how could a TM4 anything be at the top of a list in the worst to best of anything in Twisted Metal? This guy, he, he's off his rocker. He's just he's just making false claims to get hate, to get people to comment on his videos and to, to, to appease the algorithm. No, I'm going to stop everybody right there with those thoughts. I genuinely think this is the greatest special weapon in the entire series. Do I think it's absolute bullshit and it's completely busted? Yes, yes, I totally think that. I, I'm not going to ever say that I think it's fine and it shouldn't be fixed, it shouldn't be altered. Like, no, it definitely should not have released in this state. However, if you're looking at these special weapons objectively, as the player, not going against it, by the way, this is only just as the player, you're using this special weapon. If you've played every single game in the series, what is the first one that comes to mind as the most busted and broken and fun special weapon to use? I'm thinking most of you would think Sweet Tooth from TM4. And that's because it's creative. It's just floating henchmen that are glowing in different colors. They all have three different abilities. One's electrifying you, one's using a flamethrower, one's shooting missiles. It's extremely useful. It does the most amount of damage in the entire game, and I would argue in the entire series because it literally one shots 90% of the people in the entire game, which is just insane to me. It's extremely easy to use. It doesn't take any skill. You press a button and it follows everybody around the map until they're dead. It goes through walls. I mean, the list goes on. Everything about this is it's it's just broken. It's by far the best special in the entire series. Now, I totally understand people's criteria and they're and I've seen other ranking videos where they put Sweet Tooth's henchmen pretty low on the list. And they mainly just said it's because it's a bitch to go against and it's it's broken so it doesn't deserve the top spot but i'm sorry i don't think that should be a criteria i think if it is by far the strongest special in the game i think if it can one tap almost anybody i think it deserves at least a top 10 spot but in my humble opinion i'm putting it at number one so we did it we got through my full list of the top 100 uh, I know there is, you know, technically more than 100 specials in the entire series. I did obviously combine a lot of these together to make this list a little shorter and to make it easier for myself, but I think it came out making the most sense. If you disagree with my list, that is 1000% okay. I'm not here to say this is a definitive list or my opinion is the only one that matters or makes sense. Also, I did make a couple jabs and jokes towards other YouTubers who have made lists like this. I hope if any of them are watching this or if any of you guys are fans of the ones I'm talking about, just, just know that it's all in fun, and I truly appreciate and respect their opinions as well, and I hope that they watch my video and they take my consideration and my opinions as a form of respect as well. So, with that, thank you so much for watching. Make sure to leave a like, share, and support as always. Subscribe so you don't miss the next one, and for more videos like this in the near future, and also, let me know in the comment section below if there's anything you would like to see me rank in the future with this series. There's like, I don't know from best bosses from worst to best or something like that. Just let me know what you would like to see and I will definitely check it out. So hope you all have a wonderful day. Thanks for watching. Peace out.